broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas. It's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show, the show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Episode 7 of the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show for September 2017. I'm Jonathan Leung. I'm the produ producer, director, and editor of the Arcade Repair Tips video series. And joining me, as most of the time, is Mr. Arcade Repair Tips himself, Tim Peterson. Tim, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing fine, John. Good okay. to see everybody today. There we go. And we got some we got some activity in the chat room already. It's good to see you guys all here for the show. So we'll be keeping an eye on that as the show continues on. But we're just really excited to have everybody here today and really excited to be doing a live show. I'm gonna close that real quick. Really excited to be doing a live show today with you guys. Now, Tim, just like our intro says though, we are from Texas, right? Yes. And something big has happened in Texas, I don't know, within the light the last two weeks or so. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of emails and uh, people inquiring about how we were doing and stuff so we'd right. like to just update everybody real quick so here's the thing guys hurricane harvey hit southeast texas when was this tim uh this past weekend or yeah. the weekend before we last basically yeah within the last two weeks and uh, it pretty much devastated a lot of southeast texas tim now the good news is that me and tim are much further north of that Right. Uh, so we were not affected at all. But uh, many of you guys may listen to the Question and Answer podcast with our friends Eric and Chris. Okay, right. And they, that's an audio podcast you guys can download on iTunes. Well, they both live in the Houston and surrounding areas there, Tim. And so uh, both of them were somewhat more affected or at least knew people who were affected by the hurricane. And right. so what we did was I actually talked to Eric last night to get some of his thoughts about about what's been going on uh, in Houston since the hurricane hit. And so what we're going to do, Tim, instead of doing, you know, like our normal kind of intro here, is we're actually going to play that interview that I had with Eric. It's about 10 minutes long. But, Tim, before we do, I do want to throw this up here in case people are interested. Um, guys, you may notice in the description for the video, we actually have these links posted. And we would ask that you consider donating to the following charities, the Houston Food Bank, the Galveston County Food Bank, Food Bank of Corpus Christi, Greater Houston Community Foundation, uh, the Texas Diaper Bank, Tim, and for those who don't know, they provide diapers to people who have kids because a lot of people don't even have diapers for their kids right now right. because they're can't still... Can't get to the store. Exactly. They're still, they can't get out. to the store or they're an evacuee. They're living in a shelter or wherever temporarily and so they may not have enough diapers. And then Save the Children basically does a lot of the same things as well, Tim. So we would ask for you guys to consider donating to one of these uh, charities here. Tim, you'll notice that we put all local charities. Right. Because uh, we feel like local charities do a better job of actually getting support to the people who need it. Yeah, and it's not just people in Houston either. We right. got corporate Christie and Galveston. The, in Galveston area. And both and of us actually vacationing, get, vacationed in Galveston just this year. We sure did. And so both of us have actually been down there within the last year. And so actually within the last couple months. Right. So uh, a absolutely, guys, if you guys would, just please uh, consider uh, donating to one of these charities. I'm sure they would appreciate it. But now, Tim, we're going to actually play that interview with Eric and let you guys see it. So here it is. Hello guys, and today we have a special interview with our friend Eric. Now, many of you who listen to the Question and Answer podcast have heard Eric. Him and Chris do an absolutely fantastic job answering a lot of your questions on that podcast since they've taken over from me and Tim. And if you guys aren't listening to that, we highly encourage you go to iTunes and search the Question and Answer podcast, download those episodes. But Eric, we really didn't invite you here today for that. It was really more about Hurricane Harvey. And as many people know, it affected Southeast Texas pretty pretty bad. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where a lot of people thought we were affected. It was way farther south, away from us. Uh, we really didn't have much um, aftermath from that. But we know that you have, especially being in the Houston area, and you and your friends and your family have been affected by it. So today we just wanted to bring you on. And just to give us an overview about some of the things that went on kind of before Harvey hit and then when it hit and what's happening now with all of the recovery efforts that are going on in the Houston, Galveston, Southeast Texas region. So just kind of give us your story about uh, what you went through and maybe sure. what some of the people down and around that area, friends of yours, have been through as well. Okay. Well, first of all, I was... Uh pretty much unaffected by the uh, by the whole hurricane my uh, neighborhood specifically my street was uh, had no flooding uh, just out or within my neighborhood at the uh, extremities of it there was some flooding some minor flooding and then once you went out another mile or so it was uh, you know that's when it started getting into the uh, serious uh, you know a couple of feet of water flooding into uh, some of the houses the roads were impassable uh, or at least, you know, for this all happened on a Saturday night throughout the night. And, 
you know, of course, the next day you couldn't you couldn't go anywhere. Uh, it was probably Wednesday before you could really venture out. And Thursday, the water was receding enough where you could you know, get to pretty much anywhere you wanted to go. Uh, that particular Saturday night, I, I think I stayed up the, most of the night just looking out the front door every 30 minutes to see uh, see what the situation was. And, <laughs> you know, I probably went to sleep finally at about four or five in the morning once I knew that my house was OK. I was I was prepared not only with. Uh, you, you know, anything I would need to save uh, as in the house as far as, uh, you know, furniture or what have you. But I also have these arcade machines in the house. <laughs> exactly. <and> that, <laughs> that was a thought as well. Uh, so I was, you know, going to save what I could. Now, kind of talking about arcade machines, kind of taking a stop there real quick. I, I've seen a lot of pictures of you helping other people, like cutting out drywall and things like that, which is awesome of you to do. But we do, we have seen some pictures as well of some collectors being affected, especially right. in storage units and things like that. Um, any of your friends or you in particular yes. have any issues with your storage buildings or with your houses being flooded? Well, luckily, I, I had no game damaged. All my games are now at my house, which was not the case a week before this happened, I just just by sheer coincidence, uh, the storage building I was using to store games, and there were only about ten games in there. I I was sifting through those, getting either selling off games, uh, or bringing them back to the house. And I had just done that, just you know, shut down, you know, just uh, informed them that I was out of it. And that complex, that storage building complex, was flooded. Uh, wow. That was a, about a foot and a half of water, and one of my buddies had two very large units there that each held about 40 games plus other things in it. So, you know, something a size that would be able to hold like a large RV uh, full of games. And, and you know, we're, ta we're talking about games here, and obviously, you know, that it's kind of a minor thing considering the scale and scope of this disaster. But, I mean, overall, I mean, has the damage in your area been pretty minimal, or have there been people that have really been having to basically throw out all, all of their furniture and rip out their, their drywall? Uh, well, it, I guess it depends on what you call my area, because within a mile or so, everything was, in, it was not bad. But once you go out, uh, you know, a radius of two miles, three miles, there were a lot of areas that were hard hit with it. So this, uh, like I said, my buddy's storage complex and his uh, trailer he uses to carry his games, they, you know, each got a, you know, a couple of feet of water. Um, and of those, of his games, uh, you know, half were, half were destroyed. Uh, another friend who lives about two miles away, his, his house was, uh, you know, got a couple of feet. He had to be rescued by boat. He and his family were rescued by boat, as were many people in this area. Uh, but, you know, everything, you know, every, animals were <laughs> rescued as well as all of his family members. And, you know, we're, that's, the, that's the guy who I helped uh, tear out his sheetrock, which when something like this happens, it, it sounds catastrophic, and it is. But if you quickly get the sheetrock and insulation and just get everything down to the, uh, you know, the wooden studs of the house. You know, it's, it's, it's all, you can rebuild all that. You can let, the, let it dry out and, you know, you can, uh, you're, you're going to lose all your furniture, your kitchen, your kitchen cabinets, your flooring, all of that, but you can rebuild. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's not too bad in that sense. Right. And of course, I mean, your house. right, exactly. And, you know, even though it is a tragedy, <clears throat> like you said, I think in a lot of places that will be salvageable, but of course it's going to take a lot of resources, a lot of money to get, you know, a lot of these homes and people back to where they were. And so that's why we'd encourage right. you, whoever's watching, uh, please donate to the links in the description of this video. So you guys can, uh, they're all the local charities is what we're going for, Eric. So the Houston food bank, Galveston food bank, um, you know, and, and some of those, you guys uh, donate to those because they're going to be needing food for a long time. You know, recovery from right. this doesn't take, it's just, it's not a day's process. It's a week's, months, even years process. And so those resources are going to be needed for a long time, which is why we'd encourage you guys to donate. Uh, Eric, what else uh, can you tell us? I mean, is there anything else, any other stories maybe uh, that affected you or somebody that you know? I mean, obviously being rescued by boat was a big deal, I'm sure. So Right. And, and I personally know several people that were rescued by boat and of course this being an arcade type show you know i perhaps maybe i'll keep it uh in in line with that and uh you know i had several people just like uh uh the the, the guy whose whose house i you know helped tear out the sheetrock 
he was watching the water rise. And, you know, if you have pinball machines, their own legs. So you have, a, you know, you've got this free two feet that you don't have to worry about. You can replace metal legs if you need to. But, you know, unless it gets up to the body, you're, you're okay. But his, uh, his, his video games, um, you know, he had to make a decision as it was, as the water was increasing to, well, I get to keep some, I get to save some and some of them become donors for as pedestals. So he had a Robotron cabaret that he put on top of another cabaret. The, he sacrificed one to save the other. Uh, he had a make tracks that he bought brand new from a, somebody up in Canada that was selling. I, that's a whole uh, a different story, but he, they, he and his son carried that upstairs to get it, uh, yeah, like... <laughs> get it out of the way. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, once again, you start making decisions. And of course, you know, there, there were, you know, as far as furniture goes, um, you know, most of it was, is, was ruined. I don't know that they attempted to save any of that. And, you know, it's, it's really sad when you drive through these neighborhoods, you see, even though it's just strictly, you know, monetary items, it's, you, you drive through neighborhoods and you see people's entire lives out in the front yard. You know, they're all their furniture, their bed, their everything out in the front yard. So, you know, it's, and you know, you know, one lesson to be learned from this, uh, you know, whether it's flood or tornado or fire or whatever, all your pictures, all your family pictures, scan them, record them digitally, get them in a, in a separate place. Because if you lose that, you know, you can't, re that's one thing you can't recover. Yeah, you know, it's funny you should say that. My mom, like for Mother's Day and her birthday, a lot of times I'll get her a voucher to one of those places that scans the photos and stuff. Uh, and she'll send off like a slew of them and they'll bring them back on a, you know, on a CD and then we'll upload them to, uh, she has like a backup service. And so we'll upload them to there. But I always think of that, you know, in times like these where you just lose basically all those great memories that you had on film, you know, your digital Camera pictures, if you do your backup, should be okay. But all the film and all of the actual pictures that you have, you know, are pretty much ruined at that point. So, uh, like you said, I mean, a lot of monetary stuff can be replaced, but those kind of things are a lot tougher. So, right. But you know, um, Eric, we, we appreciate you coming on tonight, taking time out, you know, uh, out of your day to do this interview with us. And uh, you know, we're we've been saying our saying this all the time. Our thoughts and our prayers are with all the people in Houston and uh, surrounding areas. We hope you guys get back on your feet as quickly as possible. And, uh, you know, me, I've already donated some to some of these charities, and I hope that uh, our viewers will as well, just because I do think it'll help with the recovery efforts. Because like we said, it's going to be a long time. I mean, I mean, what do you think, Eric, just looking at what you've seen? I mean, with some of these oh. people, how long do you think recovery is going to take? Well, like you said earlier, you can't count this in days or, or weeks. It's going to be, you know, it'll, it'll be a year or so, you know, there's, there's so many things you don't think about you, it, the businesses, you know, so many of the businesses were flooded, the cars, I think, uh, over a hundred thousand cars were destroyed in the flood. You can't, and you can't buy a car because the dealership's cars were flooded. So, you know, uh, like I said, like I said previously, I, I was very fortunate to be unaffected by this. Uh, but you know, the, the, so many people are displaced. You know, the, you have a lot of people staying in shelters. I suspect, you know, some people will have to move away and stay with relatives until, until their house is habitable again. But, uh, you know, it's going to take, take a long time. Um, luckily, the loss of life was, was really low for what this was. And, uh, you know, uh, rebuilding a house is tough, but, it, you know, it, this could have been worse. And, you know, and I know it's hard to think like that sometimes when you hear about disasters, but I think you're exactly right that uh, just based on the damage and everything that we saw, I mean, it, it's amazing that the loss of life has not been higher. And I think that's just a blessing that that is the case. But uh, we'll continue to keep, like I said, all of Houston's running areas in our thoughts and prayers. And we would all, you know, we would encourage all of our viewers and listeners today to uh, go to one of the links provided below in the description for this video and donate. Eric, is there anything else you want to say before we sign off here? I think that's everything. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> okay, there you go. Well, Eric, thanks for coming on. And uh, we really appreciate giving us that update. And uh, we hope to talk to you soon. Take care, buddy.
Okay guys, we're back here and uh, we just want to thank you guys again for uh, watching the video with Eric Tim. He said a lot of interesting things uh, for those of you guys who watched it, you know, uh, just a lot of crazy stuff going down in that area. So again, we want to encourage you guys uh, to visit one of the charities that's in the description for this video right down below and donate. I mean, even if it's just a small amount, right Tim? Sure. Any amount helps. And, it, and like we said in the video, it's not going to be days or weeks, Tim. It's going to be months or years before that area is able to recover. So. Probably so. Anyway, so let's continue on here, Tim. Now, we got some questions in the chat while, while the video was playing with Eric in the interview. And so uh, before we get to those, though, Tim, let's just dive on in. What do you think? Okay. Okay, so let's, let's go, go real quick. And the first question that we have here is from Daniel. And Daniel says, Hi, I have an original Rampage arcade game and need to rebuild some of the joysticks. Do you know where I can buy the leaf switches? Also, where can I have the CRT monitor rebuilt? It has extreme burn-in. Thanks, Daniel. Okay here, Tim. So we have Daniel here. And he's got a, a original Rampage. Actually, I think you used to have one of these, yes. right? So you know a lot three about player. them. Yeah. Right, three player. And so he needs to rebuild some of the joysticks on it. And he knows that they're leaf switch joysticks. So where can he get those leaf switches to replace with his uh, joystick? Well, I believe Twisted Quarter still sells those. Um, they're about five bucks, okay. and he can go to that website if you got a link. Yeah, and we can go ahead and throw this it. up here so you guys can see it. Yeah, so we have uh, Twisted Quarter. We'll sell the Leaf Switch joysticks for about five dollars. And Tim, I put like a short le link there that you guys can go to. All of these links, of course, will be in the uh, post for the show when we post it on probably later tomorrow or later today. And so you guys can go there and see these links, but. You can go to that uh, shortened link there, bit.ly slash tq-joystick-leaf, and you can get those uh, leaf-styled switches, Tim, for the joysticks. Of course, Tim, not all of those use the joystick style. Some joysticks use the button style. I've seen that before, it seems right. like, on at least a couple of different versions. So you may need the button style leaf switch, which is also available at Twisted Quarter, and you can get it there as well. So, unfortunately, there's no way to fix the burn-in, though, Tim, right? Right. Well, the only thing I've ever heard of is that you'd have to shoot it with a phosphorus gun and stuff. I mean, stuff that nobody's going to have. Right, exactly. The, the means to get. So. And, so, and so your best option is to either get another tube or find a compatible tube, right? right? And so there are some websites to do that, Tim, and we usually have one that we recommend, and I can't even th junk junknet.net, I think it is, and Donor right. TVs uh, is one of those sites. And I forgot to put it on the outline here, but uh, there's, se there's several pages that are kind of dedicated to finding compatible tubes with monitor chassis, right? Right. And so what you want to do is try to go to one of these websites and find a compatible tube for your monitor. Uh, unfortunately, like we said, there's no way to get rid of the screen burn. So a new tube or replacement tube is really the only way to do it. <clears throat> Tim, you think we answered Daniel's question pretty I well? I think so. Okay, Daniel. So thank you for your question. Good luck getting that joy those joysticks rebuilt on that Rampage. And hopefully you can find a nice replacement tube for your Rampage monitor chassis as well. Okay, Tim. Well, let's answer some of the chat questions. We sure. had uh, uh, quite a few, it seemed like, during the um, video interview that we had with Eric. And right. so, uh, Rejected Maniac said, how did you guys get into arcade machines and repair? Now, Tim, I know we've talked about this before, uh, but why not refresh the mm -hmm. audience real quick? How did you get into arcade machines and repair? Well, um, basically out of necessity as an adult, but I did start off working at, at an arcade when I was, um, well, a preteen. I wasn't even a teenager. About the time Pac-Man first came out, a guy that I knew owned an arcade, and I would go and clean up and mow his grass and do stuff so he would let me play the games. And pretty soon, everything was new, so he would send me to Radio Shack and get parts and we had, Back when you could get parts at Radio Shack. Exactly, and <laughs> we had an Atari book that Atari sent us. Uh, a lot of times we refer to it as the Game Bible. Or the book. Uh, the book, and uh, we would learn. He taught me how to solder and some things. So I got into it early, uh, but then we moved, and I didn't forgot about it for years, and uh, saw a pole position at a local thrift shop, and uh, they wanted $700 for it, I think. And I thought to myself, I, I remember those games were always going down in the arcade. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, I'll tell you what, if it actually comes on and plays, great. I'll give you 700 for it. But if it don't come on at all, I'll give you 100 bucks for it. Will you do the deal? And he said, uh, sure. So we shook hands on it. And of course, he turned it on. It didn't do anything. And I remember that it would blow a fuse about every week. <laughs> so... Um, I got lucky there and kind of really got back into it um, not long before we met and uh, just started 
uh, buying some games. I got a Miss Pac-Man game. Well, not only that, you also took the job at Chuck E. Cheese, right? And that about the time I got laid off at the job I was on and went to work for Chuck E. Cheese. So I guess it's been, uh, oh gosh, that's been 17 years ago now. So, you know, it's been, um, most of my knowledge came about the time the internet really came out, you know, in the late 90s and stuff. A lot of my knowledge came from just asking questions, uh, you know, going to Bob Roberts' site and everything. We didn't have videos to watch back then, but a lot of information like Lawnmower Man's Pac-Man page was out there and stuff like that. So uh, that's kind of how I got into it. And then you kind of came along just how we randomly met. Exactly. So I sold Tim a computer when I was working at Best Buy and he said he had arcade games and I was over at his house. And (laughs) And then after that, it was just a matter of going over there and uh, hanging out, learning from Tim. We get together on Saturdays, work on games, and so uh, that's how I learned a lot is from you. Right. So, and then you know, from there we decided to do the videos and some other things. But I think that pretty much gives the the how did we get into it, right? Yeah, I think so. You know, I could always tell people what not to do more than what to do at the beginning, right? Because I made so many mistakes. A lot of it was just getting my hands in there and getting dirty and learning stuff by trying trying things. So absolutely. Um, you know, by all means, I. That was an easy way to get into it by the necessity because we couldn't find a person who could, would repair games anymore. Exactly. And so that's really what it comes down to. So, Rejected Maniac, hopefully that answers your question. I, you know, Tim, I think it is curious to see how people, maybe you guys, so if some of you are in the chat, let us know how y'all got into Arcade Machine and re- Machines in Repair. Right. Because uh, we'd like to know. Maybe you picked one up at a garage sale and you started doing search online and, you, and you, know, you found our website and that's why you're here today. Whatever the case may be, let us know how you got into it. We'd be curious to hear that as well. And Tim, we also had one from Hans B. He said, okay, guys, who besides me has projects waiting to be finished? What do you have on deck? Tim, do you have any projects? Boy, there's always a project. we got a storage room full of projects. (laughs) We just kind of drag them out one at a time. Um, We just finished a project we'll talk about in a little bit. Right. Uh, So we'll we'll leave that one. Um, In my garage is another uh, game, uh, a 61, that I'm working on for somebody. Um, I've got a monitor to fix. I've got, oh goodness, there's a centipede that I'd like to get out of storage and probably do a power uh, supply rebuild on it. So what about you, John? Well, I, you know, I've had one that I've been meaning to do for a while. It was a Raiden 2 that I've got a multi-game board for that I want to throw in there and I just haven't gotten around to it. But it needs a new overlay. It needs new joysticks. It needs a lot of work. And so right. I really haven't gotten into it because of that. Hopefully I can get around to that too. Tim very soon, but you know how it is. It's just time. Yeah, exactly. having a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Now we'll say that Louie actually put in here the um, uh, he put a link to I think it was the junk junknet.net slash donor dash TVs okay. is where you can go to find replacement compatible tubes if you guys are looking at that. And he also put some uh, nice links to uh, different uh, manuals and things in there. Uh, we want to thank Louie, of course, Louie, one of our Facebook moderators, Tim, but is also here moderating the live chat for us tonight. So thank you, Louie, so much for that. But Tim, I think that we, um, I think that we've kind of got that. Oh, there's one from Alan. Where can I find ma- manuals for my games? Okay. Okay. There's a lot of places online you can find them, and Louis actually linking them as we're going, which is really, which is really great. Um, but you know, textfiles.com is one Tim where there's a lot of them. Archive.org actually has quite a few of them on their website as well. Um, but if you do searches online, Crazy Kong, I think is yes. another one that has a lot of manuals. Um, we have some of these listed on our resources page at arcaderepairchips.com/resources if you're looking for manuals for games. So you may go there as well and see if uh, you can find some manu- some places that have manuals as at, um, at those places. Right. Anywhere else, Tim? Let me let me. Just just say this about manuals when I first got into collecting I thought I had to have a manual for every game and I was made sure that and, and it's kind of neat to have a manual with a game like an original mm-hmm. but really I very rarely you besides the dip switch settings or the pinouts I hardly ever open a manual maybe to get the schematics if there's something but most of that, the specific stuff, can be downloaded online. Exactly. So don't don't kill yourself trying to get every game manual. I'm just just yeah. a tip. They out are there. they are good resources though. They're neat. I I see them more of nostalgia and to have. Uh, they're good to have if you're going to keep that game for a long time. Absolutely. So now I did see here that Reject Maniac said how he got into arcade machine and repair. He said. I would like to say how I got into arcade machines and repair. I grew up in the arcade, and as a child, I would always wanted one. Found a Mortal Kombat 1 for 350 working and an Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 board in it, which is a really good deal oh, because yeah. those are pretty rare boards now. Uh, he says, borrowed the cash from my wife's grandfather and figured I would learn to repair it and save, 
instead of paying someone else. And so there you go. Oh, yeah. So if there's any other stories about you guys where you got into our game machines and repair, please let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear them. So, okay, let's continue on here though, Tim, with the pre-prepared questions. Okay. Is that a good way to say it? And the next one we have is from Carmen. And Carmen said, I recently acquired a Golden T2K arcade cabinet. Everything worked fine with it the first couple of days. And I noticed the hissing sound coming from the monitor, but everything worked correctly. Then I had trouble starting it up, where it took a couple of power cycles to get it going. Then it turned on, and during gameplay, the monitor just went out. I haven't been able to get it back. Any help would be appreciated. I haven't been able to locate any fuses on the monitor yet. I'm still looking. Also, looks like the Golden Tea Cabinet was originally a Mortal Kombat cabinet. Any help is appreciated. Now, Tim, for a lot of those people who are out there who may not be familiar, operators would change over games at the drop of the hat to whatever was making money. Sure. And so this is probably a Mortal Kombat cabinet that you have that got converted to a golden tee once Mortal Kombat stopped making money. Right. right? And so really it's common. very common. So, but Carmen's question is a good one here, Tim. It's kind of like she had it working, and then she hears this, um, what is it, like a loud a hissing. hissing sound. Okay. Yeah. Loud hissing sound mm -hmm. coming from the, from, from the cabinet, and then, like, it would take it, and then start just taking a couple more power cycles to come on, and then one time she was playing it, and boom. Right. Just gone. So what do you think is happening with Carmen's Golden T2K here? What can she do to fix it? Well, we always say if you hear hissing, <laughs> that's kind of like the snake. At. Snake is letting you know something's right. wrong or you're in danger. So a hissing sound, a lot of times it, we suspect a monitor problem. Like it could be a cap leaking or a flyback going bad or something. And so in this case, the, she needs to let us know if it is a monitor and your monitor go out, you can unplug it. Uh, the monitor only and the game should still play blind what we mean by blind John is that you would still hear the sounds be able to coin it up be able to start and golden tea you would hear all the noises of, that it would normally make and that would lead us to let us know it is just the monitor and we have a great video on that and I and Tim I'm gonna put everything that you just said up on the slide here from her description it sounds like it's having a monitor issue, like you said, kind of playing blind. Now, like Tim said, to see if this is the case, you will want to try playing the game and listening for any game sounds and when that monitor goes out. Okay, right. If you don't hear any game sounds, could have power supply issues, could even have a board issue right. at that point. Because a power supply has basically like a monitor chassis in them in it. That's exactly. Because part of your your monitor chassis is a power supply. There's a high voltage section, right. is what we usually call it. And so a lot of times your power supply can also make a hissing sound when it kind of goes kaput. Exactly. And with Golden T, a lot of times they use the ATX style power supplies, which right. tend to go out more frequently, it seems like, mainly because they're higher amperage. And Maybe so, so, you know, I think that's part of it. And so, yes, it could actually be that your game power supply has gone bad but really Tim it sounds almost like the monitor just from the description I'm yeah it does so. so she could uh, write us back if she needs to if it is the monitor of course she's going to need to get that sent off and repaired or or watch our videos on repairing them but if it's not the monitor and it's uh, she is able to uh, not to hear any game sounds, or then she needs to check her voltage and stuff, but we could go into that a little deeper. If right, and to. I threw the slide back up just so we could refer her to the troubleshooting games that are playing blind, because you mentioned yeah. that when you did your initial diagnosis there, and that's a very important part of this, because that will help you in solving the monitor issue if you are indeed having the monitor issue, right, Tim? Yeah, we always tell people, that's one of my favorite videos, because if there was ever anything that go wrong with a monitor, that, that monitor did. That's right. We had every <laughs> problem in the world. The funny thing, and this is something that's behind the scenes, is that I didn't really think that the flyback was bad. No, I didn't. Uh, we either. thought that the hot was bad, and so right. we were just going to replace the hot. But sure enough, when we we the hot went bad, then we had the little we saw a little arcing. Yes. And when we saw that arcing, we're like, oh dang, flyback's bad. And so we actually robbed the flyback from another chassis because we, we had not ordered one at that point, and just so we could finish up the video that day. And yeah. we got it working, and it was fine. But, I mean, it's just, you know, you never know, Tim. Sometimes you get in deep, you think it's one thing, <laughs> it gets deeper. You know, it's like a rabbit hole, right? right. So, you got to be careful. But, Tim, I think that about covers Carmen's questions. Is there anything else you want to add to it? No, I think we covered it good enough for now. Sounds good. So, Carmen, hopefully answers your question. Good luck getting that Golden T2K back up and running. Okay, so I am going to say one thing here. Um, Rejected Maniac uh, added a little bit more to the end of the uh, story here. He says, now I repair and restore... And this channel was really what gave me the knowledge to do it. Awesome. Tim, that's always good to hear. Thank you for that kind, those kind words, Rejected Maniac. We're hoping that we can bring even more information to you over you know the se next several years if we continue doing it that long. <laughs> yeah, or so. maybe you'll shoot a video and we'd like to feature you. That mm -hmm. sounds good to me. Okay, there's something else here too. There's another story. Let me see if I can find it here. Alan says, I started at 12 with my dad's help 
at his bar because I was always tink tinkering with something. Uh, so he gave me, let's see, he gave me an old Arch Rivals and it just grew from there. So there awesome. you go, Tim. There's another uh, story about how people get into arcade repair. Alan said, this channel and website and emails have been so useful. Always awesome. glad to hear that. Thank you, Alan, for that. And guys, remember, you can leave us uh, all sorts of uh, great messages in the chat. We want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, hopefully you guys can uh, continue to um, continue to uh, leave us messages in the chat. I was just reading. It's like it's hard to read and talk at the yeah. same time. But uh, Resector Maniac says the MK1 cabinet right there. He identified it as Mortal Kombat 1 and says, I know my Midway games. Worth more converting it back. And you're exactly <laughs> right. Because the Golden T2K, I think you can get the boards for about 35 bucks now. Yeah. I mean, they're super cheap. Great test boards, by the way. If you're looking for JAMA test boards, Golden T2K. Yeah. Super cheap. Go. Great thing to do. So anyway, so that's one thing. Uh, one thing that we'd really recommend if you guys are looking for cheap. Yeah, we used boards. to say Street Fighter Two boards. Yeah, but Street Fighter Two boards have <laughs> gone through the roof. <laughs> exactly. So, so no longer Street Fighter Two. You want to stick Golden with Golden T2K T2 boards. boards for sure. Or Cherry. Cherry uh, Masters Cherry are always Masters, good too. They're jamming. Absolutely. So. Okay, Tim, it looks like we're about caught up. Uh, oh, Han says, I've used you guys' videos a few different times for different tech tips. I appreciate what you do. All right, thank you. Thank you, Hans. So thank you guys so much. We're always good. We're always good with uh, positive feedback. Negative feedback, uh -huh. we'll take it too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anything that you've got, we'll take. So, Tim, let's move on here with some of our pre-prepared questions. And the next one is from Alan. I think Alan is in the chat right now. I think he is, because he mentioned something about this being his question. So, Alan, this is to you. Hello, Arcade Repair Tips. Hello, Alan. There you go. I have a Knights of the Round game that used to run great. I turned it on one day and I get a black screen. It still lights up and the screen goes white if I turn the brightness all the way up. The screen, the game plays if I put credits in, but I'm not sure what's wrong with it. Any ideas? Thanks. Okay, <clears throat> man. Okay, Tim. So we've got Alan here and Alan has a Knights of the Round game, okay? Right. And so Knights of the Round is a Capcom game. A lot of people are familiar with this. It's a really great game. If you haven't played it, it's a three-player, you know, side-scrolling beat-em-up. You can't yes. beat it. It's a great game. Uh, look it up in main, play it, something like that. You'll have fun with it. But he's having problems with his board. And he said it used to run great, and then all of a sudden he gets a blank, black screen. So what do you think is going on with Alan's Knights of the Round board here? Well, it sounds like from his description that he has a CPS-1 suicide battery problem. Okay. And so tell us what that is. Well, that's when the battery dies on the board. Right. And the graphics will no longer display properly. Right. So, but, the, but the weird thing okay, about CPS-1 boards is that... The graphics won't display property, but the game logic still runs. Exactly. So you'll hear it. Right. But you won't see it. Exactly. And, and he, you can credit it. He did the right thing. He can turn up the brightness on his monitor. Right. And so, and you can credit it and stuff. So he probably has a dead battery on his board. Now, the problem is that we can't just replace the battery. Right. You can't just pop it out and put another one in. Like you can if it hasn't gone bad yet. Okay, the, Okay. but the problem here with Alan's is that it sounds like it's gone bad. Sounds like it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show this, Tim, I'm going to show our outline here. Okay. And it says, it sounds like a CPS-1 suicide battery problem with your board. When the battery dies on certain CPS-1 boards, Knights of the Round is included in this certain, Tim, the graphics will no longer display properly. The good news is that most of these boards can be revived even if the battery is dead, but Tim, you got to get a new set of chips. Okay, right. it's usually what that requires. And so uh, there are instructions on the Dead Battery Society page, and there's a CPS-1 board section that you can go to. Again, we will put this uh, in the links on the post for it. But, Alan, if you want to copy that down real quick, it's arcadecollecting.com slash dead slash dead.html. If you go there and look up CPS-1 boards, you'll find Knights of the Round on the list, and you'll see that um, you'll see all of the steps that you can take to get it working. I think the images are actually there too, Tim, if you have your own burner. Yeah, you know, you could actually burn that to a chip, burn those chips yourself. But uh, yeah, CPS one boards and Louis saying this in the chat, Tim, can be a real pain, and they can at CPS two as well, um, yes. because of all of the lengths that they went to uh, to protect them. Okay, the whole thing Agreed. was they had a problem with Street Fighter two boards and that people bootlegged them all the time. There were a million bootleg Street Fighter two exactly. boards, so Capcom wanted a way to say hey, you can't boot like this. So they encrypted some portions of the board and it had a battery that had a, that powered a chip that stored the decryption key. Okay. Okay. And so what ends up happening is that it makes it really hard to bootleg, but at the same time, it also means that if that battery dies, you lose the decryption key, you lose functionality. Right. And so that's really what it came down to. And so thankfully, Tim, a lot of people have been putting a lot of effort into, um, you know, cracking the, the encryption and making chips that are already decrypted so that way you don't have to have that at all. 
And so that's really what it comes down to. So if you have a CPS-1 or CPS-2 game, and it plays just fine today... Replace the battery now. I was going to say, you should go <laughs> replace the battery or just wait till it dies and do the... Do the Phoenix. Yeah. Or, or, or put the decrypted ROMs on there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's really what you want to do. If it's working fine now, replacing the battery is pretty easy. And you have about a 30-minute window from the time you re you take off the battery to the time you put a new one on. Okay. And it's not bad. It's just like two solder points. I mean, cool. you know, you open it up, you you know, you replace it real quick, you're good. As long as you keep doing that about every, what is it, like eight years or six years okay. or five years, however long. Yeah, as long as you keep replacing the battery every so often, you'll be in good shape, okay? But once that battery dies, you're going to have to get a decrypted set of ROMs to bring it back. So All right. there we go. So Alan, hopefully it answers your question. I don't I don't see anything in the chat room, but hopefully we got that all in there. I'll throw up the slide for you one more time since you're in there. arcadecollecting.com slash dead slash dead that HTML. That's where gotcha. you want to go. Link will be in the show notes once we make the post on the website, but for now it's there. So, okay, so there you go. So, Alan, hopefully that answers your question, and good luck getting that Knights of the Round board back up and running. Okay, Tim, uh, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat. I'm looking over here. You see any? Nope. Nope. <laughs> so let's continue on with what we have here. The next one is from Josh. And Josh says, hello, I have a Golden Tea Complete Edition. Apparently it's Golden Tea Day. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, recently, it started not booting. It turns on fine, and I can tell the power supply is working as the lights glow on the motherboard. But beyond that, I'm getting a monitor is working, no signal message. Any ideas what this may be? Thanks. Now, Tim, I want to show the, the pictures that he sent here. Now, Tim, Tim this is a Golden T4 okay. um, board set, even though it's complete. Complete has all of the different, um, oh, what do you call those things? Uh, not tracks, but it has all of the different courses. Uh -huh. Okay, so complete has all the different courses of the four system. But um, uh, this is a four system that you have here. So no different than any other Golden T4 system. It has an ID cabinet number on it. And you'll see here, Tim, a nice little message that says monitor is working. Right. So um, we can probably assume that the monitor is working, right? Yes. Just a guess? Am I good? Yes, I would assume since it's got a signal on there, no signal on there, that the monitor itself is good. It usually floats around or will sit there. That's a good sign that your monitor is okay. Absolutely. So I have, a, I have a lot of people tell me that the monitor went out and says no signal. Right. Well, the monitor's fine. If, as long as you're getting words on the screen like that, and I like then how this one good. says monitor is working. Yes, it like does. to let you know, it's like you're not getting you're not getting <laughs> you're not getting a signal, but the monitor is definitely working. So Tim, uh, let's talk about this problem here. So uh, you know, I said this would lead us to suspect the board, right? Yeah. Because we we know that the monitor is probably working. Now it could be a power issue, right? It could be, and that's where I would start is by checking the voltage. Is they're real picky on those boards, right? And like we said, a lot of those use the high amperage ATX style power supplies, and so yes. you want to make sure that you're checking the voltage on that because it. They do have a tendency to go out. I mean, you know, several games that we've had over the years have gone out with those power supplies yes. in them. So it's not uncommon. So really the first step here would be definitely to check the power supply. Make sure you're getting good voltage up to the board. Now, Tim, we've, you'll notice that that board has something interesting in it with the fact that it actually has a separated video card. Yes. Okay. And so it could be that that video card has gone bad. It so could the board be. could be running fine and that video card has gone bad. And unfortunately, Tim, those cards are kind of rare now. It's usually where you would start with those two would be the video card. Exactly. And you're right. You're going to have a hard time kind of finding one, but there are some replacement ones that Right, and work. so we'll throw this information out for you, which is basically the same thing that we've already told you, Josh, but just in a nice form here that you can look at. And so uh, basically you do want to start by checking the voltage on your power supply. Even though the lights are coming on, it still could not be putting out enough voltage. Tim, should I read that again? Sure. Even though the lights are coming on, it still could not be putting out enough voltage. Guys, sometimes we assume that if we have lights on our board that we're getting correct voltage. Not always the case. You may have enough to power the LEDs, but not enough to power the board. Exactly. So keep that in mind. An LED will power on about three volts. Right. So it doesn't need the entire it five. It doesn't need the five. Right. And so but just because you, you have the LEDs doesn't necessarily mean that you actually have the board. Exactly. So there you go. Now, what we have here is that does anything come up on the monitor at boot? I mean, right now we're assuming it doesn't. Okay, right. because we're like we're not getting like bio screens or anything. Typically, you would get like some diagnostic screens that would boot up with it. Okay, mm -hmm. if you're not getting diagnostic diagnostic screens, we can pretty much assume that it's got to be a, a board or hard drive or something with that board section of your cabinet. Okay, probably not a hard drive though. If we're not getting the diagnostic diagnostics, probably something with the video card because we're not getting any video output if we're not getting those diagnostic Agreed. screens. Agreed. And so um, the Golden T4 PCBs, like this one is, Tim, this is a Golden T4 compatible, um, use 3D FX video cards. The replacement must be a Voodoo 3. It must be PCI, okay, which means PCI slot for those who are PC 
inclined. Okay, right. those are older white slots that you used to see yeah. on motherboards, and have 16 megabytes of memory. Unfortunately, Tim, these video cards are getting somewhat rare. There are people on some of the arcade forums that still have some of them, but like eBay prices are through the roof for these things. Oh wow. And so you have to be very careful if you're looking for a replacement because they can get very expensive. But that's what you'll need if you want to replace that video card. And Tim, it may be worth seeing if somebody has one you could try in order to just see if that's the video card issue uh, before you end up buying one. Yes. So if you have a friend or something that has a Golden T4 cabinet as well, might swap the video cards and see if you're getting it working. And if it does, then you need to, you need to start searching for video cards. And you may be cheaper just buying a working board on eBay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Just depending on what the problem is, you may be exactly correct, Tim. So it may be just better to go ahead and replace the whole thing because sometimes finding those video cards can be tough. Tim, I have seen people in like the KLOV forums and some other places that have them for sale. Mm -hmm. They're usually not cheap, but they're cheaper than buying a new board set. So it's something mm -hmm. to keep in mind there. So Josh, hopefully I answered your question and good luck getting that Golden T complete back up and running. And, and Tim, I hope it's just power supply. Yeah, Can we I just hope, hope so. for power supply? So mm -hmm. hopefully it's just power supply issues. So. Okay, guys, remember, we're still in the chat here. See a lot of people still watching us. Thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to send us messages and questions. We have been answering them as we get to them, right, Tim? Yes. So, but with that in mind, I don't see anything in there right now, so we'll go on. Now, it looks like uh, Louis just um, linked over to uh, one of the video cards on eBay so you guys can see. Uh, but, it, yeah, it's a Voodoo 3 is what you want. PCI slot, 16 megabytes. Okay. Okay, is what you want. So that's what you're looking for. And like I said, they can get a little pricey. I know what you said when you said the white one. <laughs> yeah, the white one. Yeah, the white slot, right? I know what the you're white slot. About now. Okay. So well it used to it used to be white right. on most computers. So um but Louie linked to one. I can't click it right now, Tim. I don't know what the price is on it, but that's one you can check out in the live chat if you guys want to see one. So Okay, Tim, let's move on to Retro Amigo, and I think he's in the chat room with us. Okay. Okay, and he says, Hi guys, question for the live show. What are Jonathan's and Tim or Jonathan and Tim's arcade and pinball grails? Uh, have you acquired any of the years? My wife has a few. Silent Scope, Lucky and Wild, Sit Down Cabinet. A Sega Airline Pilots, currently on eBay for 5K. Mine would be a full-size Afterburner Cockpit or Sega R360. Thanks for the live shows. Appreciate the time and effort you guys invest in making them. Awesome. So, uh, Tim, Retro Amigo here. We've got some stuff, uh, you know, he's asking, what are your grails? So tell <laughs> us, Tim. Uh, Tim's laughing because he's looking at the slide. You yeah, guys can't you see guys it yet. Can I throw it. it up there? Yeah, go oh, ahead. Let's go ahead and throw it up there. There you go. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I had my little uh, my little Photoshopping skills there with the Omega Race, Tim, because Omega Race is actually one of your uh, arcade grails, correct? Very much so. I, I, like I said, I come in about that time when those vector games were really popular, so... Uh, Omega Race and Star Castle were a couple that I really, um, I've never owned an Omega Race. I have owned a Star Castle. I don't know why I ever got rid of it. I was about uh, to say, I remember you had the Star Castle. And so uh, those were, those were one game I really, I don't know why I traded it or did something that must have been really good trade for me to let go of it. But because I've really liked those um, vector games from that era or Two of my favorite. And then pinball, I've always wanted a Star Trek Next Generation. It's just like, I know it's, it's kind of the one that it everybody is. likes. Every, you know, it's not that, it's not it one that's It is so addicting. Super... You know, I play that on Pinball Arcade a lot, Tim. I love that table. And it's like the more I play it, and because I've never owned one, right. the more I play it, the more I like it. Yes. So, again, you know, that's probably something I would really like to own in, in the future. Uh, another pinball game I didn't mention would be Guns N' Roses. I did like ACDC. I uh, do like uh, a couple of newer pins. I'll have Ghostbusters. Yeah, okay. Ghostbusters is a lot of fun. I would Absolutely. probably put that up there now. ACDC. That's, you see, that's on my list. Yeah. So, so um, mine, Mortal Kombat 4, which, Tim, I also had one, and right. I sold it probably way cheaper than I should have. But, you know, at the time, I, I, it was before I had my game room. I was still storing them all in my garage, and, you know, it was just one of those things where it's like, ah, I don't mm -hmm. really want to hang on to it any longer. It was a great game. I enjoyed it a lot, but, um, you know, just didn't get around to it. Um, Soul Calibur, which I, I have the cabinet in storage, but I have the board here, so I can right. always throw that in another JAMA arcade cabinet. I've got a uh, Tekken Tag, Tim, that I could swap in and out, which is really nice. Um, Street Fighter 2, I do have one of those, because, I mean, I think uh, anybody who grew up in the 90s, you know, really is going to be a Street Fighter 2 fan, right? Right. It doesn't matter who you are. And then, uh, you know, Dance Dance Revolution, which I have a cabinet in storage, and at <laughs> some point I will actually work on it. Speaking of projects I need. Right. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, uh, that thing takes up so much space, I'm going to have to, like, clear out some stuff in the game room in order to get it in here. So, anyway. Um, 
And, you know, Tim, pinball-wise, the getaway. High Speed 2 right. is a great table. I would love to own one of those. Uh, you know, maybe one of the only uh, pinball games that I would consider selling one of the ones that I have for that, you know, would be probably about an even trade, you okay. know. Um, another one would be ACDC, of course. Vault Edition is still out there. You can still get them, so uh, that's a great game as well. And then Wizard of Oz, Tim. I've been wanting a Wizard of Oz ever since we played it the first time. So uh -huh. um, Wizard of Oz is a lot of fun. And, uh, you and know, yeah, we both like Who Done It. Yes, and Who Done It is a great game. It's not on my Grails list, but it's yeah, one that I we would, both absolutely love. Exactly. If I run across one that yeah. was a good price, I wouldn't mind owning it. Absolutely. So uh, Barry Ausler design game, Tim, if I right. remember correctly. Love Who Done It. So, um, guys, what are some of your arcade and pinball Grails? I think that's what we're going to get to now, right? Yes. So, in the chat. What are some of the things that you guys are looking for? Let us know. We want to hear what are the things that you guys, what are you guys going for? And uh, Tim, on the video card that we were talking about for the Golden Tea Complete, yes. um, Alan just said 75 bucks for the Voodoo version. So okay. $75 not is not too bad. Not bad. So, I mean, you can get one pretty reasonably, but anyway. So, back to what we are talking about. Pinball Arcade Grails for the guys in the chat. Let us know, and we'll be talking about them as the show continues on. Okay, Tim, let's move on here. We have Matt, and Matt says, oh... Wrong, wrong camera. We'll get to that okay. in a second. Uh, Matt says, Hi there. I have a cocktail multi cade that glitches like this. And Tim, there's a video link. Right. Uh, from time to time. If we turn it off for a while, it goes away, but always comes back. Any ideas? Thanks, Matt from Oregon. And Tim, you guys can check out the video. But Tim, I'm just going to go ahead and show the picture. Can I do that? Yes. Okay. Because Look at there. A lot of people are going to know the answer to right. this. Right, so, um, you know, you see this little black line, this little trim line on the screen. Of course, you know I have all the explanation over there. Uh -huh. But um, you see this little uh, trim line on the screen here, Tim. What is that? What is causing it to kind of, the screen to flip like that? Well, it's perhaps a, a scrolling or a, probably a vertical hold. It could be a horizontal hold issue, but more than likely a vertical hold. I'm not, I mean, I said that backwards. More than likely it's a horizontal hold. Right. Even though it looks vertical. Right. So, um, anyway, you can adjust it a lot of times. Sometimes a pot will go bad. I have seen capacitors that were weak in that area that would cause that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes just refilling the solder will help on, behind your, but most of the time it can be adjusted out by adjusting both pots, the horizontal and the vertical, you can get that to go away. There you go. And we have a video on adjusting an arcade mode. Right, and I'm going to put that up here again so you guys can see it. So, it looks like a whole issue, like Tim mentioned, okay? It could be vertical, but a lot of times when you see it flipping this way, Tim, it's horizontal. Yes. Okay, um, not always, but that's what we've seen. Um, since you have a cocktail, we're going to refer you to our video on opening a cocktail cabinet, because that'll probably help you out with that process, depending on your cocktail. And, Tim, we're also going to send Tim to our video on adjusting an arcade monitor, which, Tim, is one of our more popular videos that we have, right? Yes. Because, I mean, we actually did that video quite well. It was one of the first ones that, I guess it was in the second batch of videos we really did, but it's a very good video that shows you how to adjust your monitor. Tim, not all monitors look the same, but they all basically are adjusted the same way. Right. Yeah, somewhat similar. They're enough to where you could probably figure it out if you watch that right. video. So there you go. So Matt, hopefully it answers your question. Try adjusting one of the holds, especially the horizontal hold on your arcade monitor to see if you can get that screen flipping out. So awesome, awesome Tim. I think we got it, Matt, covered. So uh, good luck getting that screen flipping out of your cocktail cabinet. Okay, Tim, so here we've got uh, some more questions in the chat. Carmen says, what is the cost of an original Mortal Kombat board with sound card? eBay has them for around $249. Is that a good price? And Tim, unfortunately, I'm not real up to speed on what pricing of boards are recently. Yeah, I'm hoping, did anybody answer that in uh, the chat Not that room? I saw as of right now, but um, there's probably somebody in here that knows. Uh, Rejected Maniac seemed to know a lot about Mortal Kombat earlier, so he may, may have a better idea of what current pricing is. Right. I mean, in the past, we've bought them for cheaper than that. It I seems, can tell you that. 200 on, bucks. Yeah, it seems on the high side to me, but then again... The last time I bought one was probably 10 years ago. Exactly. And so uh, for an original Mortal Kombat board, it seems like MK2 and MK4 always went for more. Right. Anything above that. It seemed like original Mortal Kombat was always a little bit cheaper. It, uh, yeah, it always seemed a little cheaper. But not knowing the market these days, it could be that high. Um, so is it a good price? I honestly don't know. Yeah, I mean, and it really depends. I mean, it like seems I said, high to me. It seems a little high to me, too. I mean, I would be thinking 200 or below, really. Yeah, I, I mean, just right so. off the bat. So, I mean, we'll see. Now, Tim, and people have been chiming in with some of their Grail okay. games. And so, Hans says Sinistar. Yeah. You used to have a Sinistar. Sinistar. Yes. So, uh, and I remember that. Um, Carmen says Mario Brothers, which yes. I used to have a wide body that I, um, I sold the Stan, actually. Uh -huh. Our friend Stan has. Um, did you ever have Mario Brothers, an original? I can't um, 
So many, so many games have cycled through, it's hard to keep track. Not the original, not the orange cabinet one. Right. No. So there you go. And then uh, Louis the says... Super uh, Mario Brothers. There you go. Louis says, uh, Zybots, Wizard of Oz, uh, and, and Zybots Arcade, Wizard of Oz, Pinball, I believe. Okay. And then uh, Collector Cat says Ninja Warriors, Tim, which is a two-screened, or three-screened, two-screened arcade cabinet, over, I if I so. remember correctly. So quite a few there. So uh, Carmen also says, first-time viewer of the show, and it's great. Oh, Thanks good. for joining us, and we're glad that you think it's great. We'll, can, <laughs> we'll continue on. Um, you say nothing yet. Right. Now, it looks like, so, uh, let's see, Sonicu Brat says, uh, for what it's worth, in my turbo, I couldn't get the hold to stay put. Turns out the sync switch polarity needed flipped. And so, yeah, it could be a sync-related issue, right, Tim? Yeah. And that's something we don't talk about very often, but sometimes when you're having problems holding, it can be caused by sync issues, whether that's polarity, whether that's having the wrong polarity hooked up. It's, it takes a negative sync versus a positive sync or composite sync. Yeah, I would sync. say if you bought it or it has always done that. What I, most of the time when we're talking about a hold issue, it kind of starts doing that. True. But he, he's right. That's a good... Thank you for that point. It's a great yeah. point. Oh, three screens on the on the Ninja Warriors. Thank okay. you for that, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was thinking it had multiple screens. It's been a while since I've seen one. It's yeah, not me one that too. you see very often. So there you go. So, uh, Tim, it sounds like some people have some more grails out there. If you guys have any other grails, let us know what they are. We'd love to hear what you guys are looking for. Okay, Tim, let's move to Gavin. And Gavin says... Hey, I need to replace RAM on my JAS board. Is this the right RAM for me to purchase? And Tim, he has a link to twistywristarcade.com slash RAM slash 46-4116-RAM.html. So, Tim, I think we can assume that he's probably looking at 4116 RAM chips. Yes. Just and... based on that URL. I don't even think I have to go there. I right. think I can probably figure that out. And so, Tim, are 4116 RAM chips the right ones for Williams Sports? Yes. I'll never forget our friend that put them in a, talk about putting them in a fishbowl yes. and stirring up. And yes, Ken Graham. Ken Graham. Former, yeah. former Williams programmer talks about, like, maybe you don't even need to necessarily get new ones, right? Yes. <laughs> Just pull them all out, put them in a fishbowl, stir them around, put them back in, and they may work. <laughs> he actually says that, and he used to work for Williams, so we'll it's, take his word for it. It's funny, but uh, we do. Uh, there is a mod that a lot of people are doing, so that is the correct. That's the official memory chip. If you yeah. look at the schematic, you're going to see 4116s, right? Right. And if you'll bring up the slide now, John Scoresaves.com says that there is a. They have a. 4164 mod. Right, and so a lot of people don't like the 4116 chips because they get hot, Yeah, they fail a lot, and they require multiple voltages, okay? So you have to make sure that all those voltages are good getting to those chips. So a lot of people have moved over to the 4164s. Now, the, you can't do just a straight swap, though. You right. actually have to modify the board to use the 4164s. And so the scoresaves.com slash miscellaneous there slash just say no to 4116.html <laughs> will show you how to do the mod on your Williams game. So you can take the 4164s, which are much more reliable, they run a lot cooler, and uh, they only require one voltage as far as I know, Tim. And so, you know, with those things in mind, um, you're talking about, it's kind of like bulletproofing, okay? Right. Do you want to run what originally came with it, or do you want to bulletproof it a little bit? Really, the choice is up to you, but I thought we would mention this here for Gavin, just in case some people wanted to take the extra step and bulletproof their game. Yes. So, I mean, that's really what it comes but down to. But we've replaced a lot of 4116s and oh, yeah. been good for years. Oh, yeah. So. And so it's not like it's a big deal. No. But it's just something that people are doing to increase reliability. And, Tim, as operators, you always want to increase reliability. Okay? Now, as collectors, you may want to keep everything original. Right. But as operators, you always want to increase reliability. Game game down, no money, right? I mean, that's And you remember what Ken said to make sure that if you're running a switching power supply in there, you may get some weird errors that aren't chip. Problem. Right, exactly. He so, highly recommends staying with the original power supply. Rebuilding the original Williams power supplies is the way to go on Williams games, according to Ken Graham, and we are also going to second that, because he knows better than we do, Tim. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So, yes, 4116 memory chips are the right ones for most Williams boards. May consider the 4164 memory mod if you want something a little bit more reliable. Yeah. So, Gavin, hopefully answers your question, and good luck uh, replacing those memory chips on your Williams board. Okay, Tim, let's move on to Jason. I don't think we have anything in the chat. We'll move along here. So we have Jason. Jason says, I have a 3091 cocktail game that won't let us hit start to play a game. When I power the game on, it cycles to start and gets to the home screen. It even plays the music, but it won't let us do anything. What other details or things do you need to know? Any ideas on how I can fix it? Looking to get it operating again. 
Okay, Tim. So we have Jason here. He's got a 39 and one, which is right. kind of the precursor to the 60 and ones that we see so often now. Yeah. And it's so been, it's been a while. It's been a while. In yeah. fact, I don't even know if you can still get the 39. And I don't ones. think so. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much everything. But we've moved. had them before. Right. We've had them before, but pretty much everything's moved to the 60 and one now at this point. So Tim, he can't start the game. He's sitting there. He's hitting the the you know the start button, and the game is not starting. What could be happening with his 39 and one board that would cause this? Well, you could have bad wiring or a bad start button. Right. That's, I mean, I mean simplest answer if it first, was right? working and it quit working, then I would definitely check the wiring, especially the grounds, because they're probably daisy chain from the other grounds. And it's so common to have breaks in those daisy chains. Right. right? And um, you can go ahead and show the slide, John. What yeah. he needs to do is go into his test mode. And he actually sent us this screenshot. I don't know if this was to show that it wasn't working or that it was working or what, but this IO test where he is right now will tell him whether or not his switches are activating, correct? Right. And that's what he needs to know. And so if you're not getting activation here, then you're probably having a wiring issue with your button right yeah and the only other thing if if your buttons are working he might have gotten out of free play he might be uh not in free play mode maybe right. he needs to get back into free play because it's might be uh, a lot of times uh requiring a coin in other words it's not going to start until it's coined up um it should be a dip switch on the board um, you know, there's some things that he can check yeah, there. Yeah, and you see, that's different than the 60 in one. The 60 in yes. one is a software switch right, that you a, change in the test mode. Yes. Right, whereas the 39 in one actually has a hardware dip switch that you're going to change for free. And mode. a lot of times you think, well, how did a dip switch get changed? Right. But I can tell you how many times I've actually went into a game. Maybe you were in there and you were cleaning or something or you were adjusting something else. You accidentally turned it or hit it and it didn't notice it right away because it didn't take effect until the game went off and come back on. Exactly. Um, so that does happen. I've, I see it happen at work all the time. So I would check out your manual and see uh, about that. Make sure all the settings and stuff are right there. Sounds good. So Tim, I mean, basically the two things he needs to check is he needs to make sure that his wiring to his start button is good. He needs to make sure that his cherry switch is working. Yeah, the cherry switches do go bad. Now over time, Usually they will get worn out more right. than they will break or quit working. I think we've I, I say I think we've all seen this. But I know me and Tim have seen this where the cherry switch button actually starts like wears. Yes. And it'll at some point almost become even with the rest of the switch if right. it's been pressed so many times. And I know you, I mean it takes I don't know who knows how many thousands and thousands of hits to get to that point. Right. But it will. That little switch will wear after a while. A quick way to make sure your cherry switch is good, you can take a small wire, say about six inches long, strip both ends and touch them to gather uh, the two wires that are going to your switch, touch them together and if it jumps or pushes or whatever it's supposed to do at that starts, uh, at that time, then you'll know that that switch is bad. Or right, you can so, also use a meter. And right, so basically it. you're talking about jump ring the ground and the wire for the switch. Just jump yeah, those real jump quick. Jump with the two the wires on, with, with the, the game, game on. on. And in that input test. Touch them just temporarily. You can touch it one end. I usually, let's say it's a black and a red wire. You can put the one in the black and hold it there. Then take the red and just kind of touch it. Every time you touch it, it should jump, start, go left, go right, whatever it's that that particular switch is supposed to do. And if it doesn't, then it could be wiring issue more than switch issues, Yeah, right? <clears throat> maybe. So there you go. So, Jason, hopefully answers your question. Let's check the button, let's check the switch, let's check the free play mode, Tim, and hopefully between those three, that 39 and one board will start working, right? Hope so. So, sounds good. Jason, thank you for your question. Good luck with your repair. Okay, Tim, we did have a question from Alan here, and Alan says, ever thought about starting and teaching classes? Man, you're in our classroom right now, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've actually thought about that in the past. Um, maybe doing online courses or something like that. I don't know if we'll ever get that organized. We and, <laughs> and we have. Um, I, I was in some discussion about maybe going, um, maybe like if a, say a town, and uh, we were in negotiations which with a place in Austin about maybe going down there and teaching a week-long class or something. That is something that I think we would consider. Uh, but then again, you know, if somebody wants to organize that, if you live in a big enough town or, you, or in a big enough area where you have a lot of collector friends and y'all wanted to organize that, um, you know, we could probably look into something like that. Uh, we have went to people's homes and uh, taught them. I like the guy, uh, I don't know if you kept up with this, Jonathan, there was a guy that went around repairing pinball machines and he videoed, like he made a trek all around the country. Right. I thought if I could ever get enough time off of work and do that, maybe for a 
a couple weeks, that would be pretty cool. So there you go. I might would consider doing that. So you're saying for the right price, you'll... (laughs) Yeah, it it would have to be financially worth it and time schedule where I could take off my normal job. You guys Chuck know. Chase needs you. They're breaking games all the time. They do. Well, every <laughs> single minute. <every> <laughs> was, that, was that them calling you just a second that ago? Prob- no, that was my son. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. Okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm used to you getting calls while we're filming and things. So I mean, That's it's a not different that big video. issue, broken down truck. But oh, we'll, okay, there you go. So, we'll get back to that one. So, yeah, we've thought about teaching classes, maybe online classes and stuff. But really, Tim, this is kind of our classroom where we are here. But if you're in an area and, you, you know, and maybe enough people are interested in, you know, doing something like that, we, we could possibly consider coming down, right? And we do do seminars at some of the events that's that right. we go to. Houston um, is uh, usually where we do a lot of seminars. We've done them in Georgia yes. at the uh, Southern Fried Game Room Expo or Gaming Ex- Expo. They've recently changed So it. if you have a gaming expo near you near you that we haven't been to or we haven't been to Northwest, uh, we haven't been Northeast. So, right. you know, if there's a, if you would like to help uh, by getting us on your ticket or whatever to uh, organizers, if you want to contact them, we'd be more than happy to to talk to them about it. Absolutely, sounds good. So, Tim, let's continue here. And uh, the next one we have here is for Mike. And Mike says, I hope you can help me. I have a 60 in one that when I turn it on, shows the Dell logo on the screen and then goes black. I have one green light and one, or one green light on and one green light that just flashes on the board. Uh, the, the game is only about four months old. Thank you, Mike. So, Tim, we have Mike here, and his 60 in 1 is showing the Dell logo. That's really weird. Right. I, <laughs> so, didn't, I didn't know Dell sponsored the 60 in 1. Uh, yeah, they must be producing them in some warehouse somewhere, mm-hmm. I think. No, seriously, though. The 60 in 1 board, Tim, is a bootleg board. I mean, yes. It really is. Let's be honest. And so, um, it is not made by Dell. It's not sponsored by Dell. But... I bet you anything, Tim, the monitor in your game is from Dell. Right. Okay, because that's probably why we're getting that Dell logo there. And so, Tim, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this up here. Okay, Mike, we're guessing you have a 61 board with a Dell PC monitor in your arcade cabinet. The Dell logo is probably just the monitor booting up. Try changing the input on the monitor itself. Now, Tim, since it's a PC monitor, it's going to have multiple inputs. Okay? Right. So, well, not always, but a lot of PC monitors have a VGA, a DVI, maybe even an HDMI input that they're mm-hmm. going to use, and they're, you're going to be able to switch between them. And so, if there's an on-screen display that you can get to on your monitor, you may try to cycle through there and see if you can find it. Maybe you can switch the input. Some monitors have an input button, right? I yes. mean, so, you just hit that input button a couple of times, you can select the input. But it may be on the wrong input, which is why you're not getting anything on the screen. So let's go back here, Tim. I think I mentioned that. You know, a DVI, VGI, or VGA, HDMI. Make sure your monitor is in the correct input for your 61 board. Can be a board issue. May need to replace it. And 61 boards cost around 50 bucks. And you can find them on eBay. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them all over the place. And so go this ahead, is, This is where it's good, John. We are always talking about, we're, we're joking about the golden tee board earlier. It's always great because the 61 is JAMA. Right. To have another JAMA board, then you can plug that board in just for video purposes. You'd know right away, it's my board. Right. Now, here's the thing, though, Tim, with the 61. A lot of these 61s are hooked up with the VGA adapter. So you'd have to make sure that the board that you put in there also has a VGA output right. in order to do the testing. So that's something to keep in mind. But yes, you are correct. So, But the 61 board, Tim, the nice thing is it's cheap. Right. You can get another one really easily. And Tim, I've seen more where the board went bad than where the monitor went bad. And that yes. shows you how cheap they make these things. That's true. Okay. We have seen more 61 setups where the board has gone bad than we have where the monitor has gone bad. Right. Something to think about. Again, the and the rarest of thing before we go on would be that the dip switch got changed to a not to non-VGA, a non VGA non right. VGA exactly, which is like dip switch two, I yes. think. Yeah. So, um, just because we done we so did it many recently, late, right? Recently, yeah. Um, and I was having a problem one day, and I was like, man, I can't get the video to display. I was seeing the logo just like that, and I flicked it on, and it came right up. Right. So. Again, that doesn't normally happen, but it does happen, so keep that in mind. And Tim, something, you know, obviously whoever built his Multicade, Mike's Multicade here, um, put a a PC monitor in it. Tim, Mm -hmm. we don't recommend that. I mean, you can get really nice, like, open frame monitors from Holland Computers, who's one of our partners, Tim, or several other places for, like, a couple of hundred bucks that will be a lot better, okay? But the problem is, is that a lot of these 61 builders try as cheap as possible to put right. these things together, and it's much cheaper to buy an off-the-shelf PC monitor and put it in there than it is to buy a nice, like, arcade-quality open frame monitor. 
And so. the open frame monitor will come on automatically. Right. You won't have to go in, won't have to change the inputs and things like that. There's a lot of advantages in getting a, a true arcade LCD monitor. With that said, though, your PC monitor should work okay. You may need a new board, though. Even with the lights blinking on and off, Tim, I've seen one where the lights were blinking and still nobody was home. Again. I mean, so it's yeah. definitely something where board could definitely be bad and like i said we've seen more where the board went bad than we have with the monitors so Agreed. check the monitor here's another thing you can do tim hook up a computer to that monitor it's a vga Agreed. find another computer just hook it up to the monitor see if the monitor comes on uh if it comes on probably bad board very simple yep. there we go so my couple answers your question and good luck getting that 60 in one multi cave that you bought back up and running yeah you gotta hook up a laptop and go split screen there you go exactly speaking of split screen all right tim we got something cool time to go walk that <laughs> way guys this is a uh, tim's tech tip and for this tech tip we're going to talk about the cocktail arcade game kit from holland computers that we did a video on and a post on right tim right and so right now i'm going to go ahead and switch over to tim so you guys can see him here we go check it out all right. Okay, I'll have to adjust it real quick for you. Are you, are you there? We got you all in the frame here. There we go. Okay, I'm going to move this around. I, I feel like we said, like the Today Show, we swapped to this cooking section. That's right. It's a cook, this cooking is, segment. This now. is over here where I've been cooking. <laughs> we uh, built this game in a Saturday a couple weeks ago. Yes. And uh, we got And there's it a video in. coming. Actually, we posted the video, and since we posted it, Holland Computers has taken this particular item down. Right. And so we're going to be posting a different version of the video, Tim, with some changes yes. for the new item that they're going to be showing. So, but, I mean, yeah. but we still, the cabinet will be the same. So we want to go ahead and take a moment and show you guys the cabinet. So, Tim, yeah, I'm going to let you take it away. I want to over here. There's a couple things that we, you know, we really liked about it. You know, we were kind of skeptical. You know, it comes in three boxes, didn't use but a few tools. And all of a sudden, I mean, we built this thing. And the more we got to build it, the more we liked it. Now there are, oh, it didn't, it came with a plexiglass top, but we put, we recommend getting the glass top. Also these clips, you, if you guys can see them, there's some clips here that uh, hold the glass on, just like the original. You guys can probably see the old clip here, an original style midway cabinet. You can compare the two. Can you see that on the screen, John? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, well this guy is just a tiny bit taller, a little bit wider. That's because that one is, um, three quarters inch plywood and this is five eighths. So the T molding actually that comes with it is a little wide. After we put it on there, um, we didn't bother us at all. In fact, we thought the T molding and everything came out really good and looked good on there. Of course, you could trim that down a little bit with a razor blade if you needed to. So it's a little bit thinner wood, but when you're just sitting there playing it, I thought it really feels good. It has a good feel has a good look to it. Um, we like the, you know, all the joysticks and stuff. We're just their normal parts from Holland Computers that they built this, and we were kind of proud of it when we got through with it. I thought it I turned out, turned yeah, out great. and you know, it, I think it did too. And to be honest with you, it's very heavy. Um, yeah. It's a lot heavier than what I thought it would be. It is actually, it's made out of melamine. Yeah. Okay, uh, the five eighths inch, like you mentioned, and it's actually pretty sturdy. Yes. I mean, I mean, I feel, I feel like um, kids could beat on this and it'd be okay. Oh yeah, and that's the key, you know. I mean, obviously, I don't know if it's it's definitely home use. We should say that this is right. very doesn't, home use. Doesn't have a coin door or anything. And they put the uh, test and service switches on the front of the cabinet. You'll never see that in a um, right. in a uh, what would you call it, uh, Tim? A coin operated right. device. The volume knob is right here. But man, for home, this is so nice to have. I it, mean, you can make modifications to your jammer board no problem without having to open up the cabinet. Really and it makes it big. The kit included the LCD monitor, all the wiring, all the buttons, everything. And, and we show, and we're, you'll see when we get the video on how to put it all together. Realistically, I think, especially if you have any kind of knowledge, um, I think you probably do it in two to three hours. Oh, yeah. And what's cool about that, guys, is we've had so many people that have written in and said, I can't find a game. Uh, all the games in my area are high priced. Um, I don't want to tear up a, a new, uh, classic cabinet to build a multi-game or a, a MAME or something like that. Well, here's a great option for a really good price, including shipping and stuff. So, I just wanted you guys to see this. This was our project that we recently, and we put it all together. A couple tips that we will talk about. It kind of puts together like a... I'm going to uh, have Tim come back over here. We'll talk about some of those. Here we go. Are we, are we back? You guys you guys can't see us yet. Here we go. 
Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're back. Okay. Okay, how was that? Was, <laughs> that was a long great. trip over there? I'm yeah, just wondering. Well, okay. Oh, we can still see the cocktail cabinet over here. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, guys, it was really a great project. And, Tim, one thing I forgot to mention was it has, like, all sorts of slats in it for cooling. So you really – in fact, and it has an extra little panel that you could put a fan in if yeah. you wanted to. I mean, but the entire bottom has, like, slats in it. The, um, the bottom of each side has slats in it. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, as far as cooling goes, whatever board you put in there should be well-cooled. Yeah. We're going to sell this one. In fact, if that's right. you're watching <laughs> that's right. and you're this looking for, for a game and you would really like to watch one that's been featured on our shows. <laughs> there you go. We'll personally autograph it and and uh, make you a good deal on it. Comes with the comes for a premium. If we were going to keep it, no, I mean we could we could always add some artwork or something to it. But there's not a lot I would do to it. No, it looks I, great. I probably would add a, maybe a fan, but you know overall. It was really, uh, it was a lot better than I kind of thought it would be. You, being honest, you oh, know, yeah. I was like, I didn't know you get kind of a kit together. I recently put a desk together for my daughter, and you know, as you know, it kind of worked like that where you put the pegs in and you turn the screw and it locks it in, kind of like uh, some people have said, just like furniture you buy and comes in a box. Cam and, and peg. Can, yeah, cam and peg, and uh, but I really like it. It it turned out way sturdier than I thought. And uh, we show a few things in the video, a few tips that will probably help you if you've never done that before. And we'll have a re-edit of that video coming up very soon so you guys can see it. But Tim, let's go ahead and throw up some of these things we have in the outline here. The kit comes with a plexiglass top like you mentioned, but we recommend getting the glass top and the clips. The clips yeah. are separate. What was okay. it, $50 more for the glass? I can't remember. I don't want to quote anything, but we do have a post up on our webpage that you guys can go to and you'll see it there. Yeah, check that out because it's a little bit more, but... I think it just it adds a lot to the look of it. it Makes just, it pop. It really, it really does. shines and stuff like that. If you're having a tough time getting the cams and pegs to line up, try rotating pieces. Because, like a Tim, a great example is where the shelf goes in in the bottom. We had a problem getting um, getting the top of it to match up with one of the sides, and we just end up rotating that piece real quick and rotating it back onto the pegs, and it right. worked really well. And so you may need to rotate. You may need to come at it from a different angle instead of coming straight on. Maybe kind of lift it up and come at a different angle in order to get those cams and pegs to line up. Very minor problems. Though. Yeah, exactly. Just a couple times. On um, the control panels, Tim, there was one thing where we um, had to attach them to the sides of the cabinet. And in order to get them really flush, we had to undo the cams on the control panel itself. Yes. Okay, and then we then we flush them up to the sides of the cabinet. Then we tightened them back down on the control panel. You may have to do that to get them flush with the sides. So, And Tim, we did have a little bit of issues uh, putting the speaker on. Okay. Yeah, because we waited till we had already installed the that side panel. panel so right. we're, what we call the fan speaker panel. Yeah, we're trying to reach over inside with not a lot of room when we realized all we had to do was take the panel back off and easily screw it in. Right, there's only four cams holding that yeah. on. And so you take off those four cams and easily you can get that panel off, mount the speaker to it, no problem. And then, Tim, the other thing was that the T-molding, like you mentioned, just a bit wider than a cabinet. Actually, I kind of like it. I mean, I don't know why. It kind of looks nice. I don't notice it, it at all. It definitely didn't bother me at all once we got it on there. And I thought it might because I'm kind of picky about some things. Exactly. It didn't bother me at all. But if you guys want to, you can shave it down. I mean, it's no problem. To I actually like the fact it's just a hair uh, shorter and a little bit less wide. Um, and, I, and the reason why, and it's a lot lighter because right. it's got an LCD monitor in it oh, than yeah. the old, old tube. For this reason, most of us family people we all have an suv or a smaller suv and you can get it up inside of that's there right exactly it. it would fit really good inside that would fit of in a, my crv i, I could have a just CRV, about no i could just about put that in the back seat of my small car so i think that it would be really good in a small suv it'll go right in the back absolutely so guys there is the uh, holland computers cocktail cabinet kit we we'll have a video we're going to be modifying the video that we did have posted tim to match the new kit that the new kit that they're releasing and the post is up already but there will be a video coming soon with the assembly. i think a lot of people were like us they didn't know you know the price almost sounded too good oh yeah and uh you guys and you're can talking check out like their price 700 bucks yeah and you think and you're thinking how in the world can i you know is it going to be worth it and i will we'll just have to say you can trust us we believe in quality we try to do quality work and we we like and we'll call out people who don't do very we have good before. work so if we can recommend it if you're kind of on the fence we we do recommend and we're very proud to have built this and it is for sale and we don't mind the people that buy it, we don't feel like we're ripping them off at all. We feel like they're going to get a good deal 
because it's so well built and it's brand new. Exactly. <laughs> so and it's still, I think everything comes with a 90 day warranty from Holland Computers as well. Tim. That that's a big plus too if you're new and you're not quite sure uh, about that. Absolutely. So guys, that's Tim's tech tip is the cocktail cabinet kit from Holland Computers. We'll have the new video up very soon, but there is a post about it on our website if you want to check it out. And that price includes shipping. That's, that's right. That, thing. that price was pretty much with shipping. You so, think about how much shipping a, a game, completed game, would cost a whole lot more than it would unassembled. Exactly. So that's a good deal too. Absolutely. So... Okay, Tim. Now we did have one from Jacob Maniac. He says, "Are there any places still that still sell new 25-inch monitors? I bought one a few years ago and can't find a place that still sells them." Now, Louis put some links here, Tim. But I think um, you know Betson and Hap still yeah, have Betson them, right? And Hap. Well, <clears throat> so Gardner. Betson Imperial <laughs> and um, and like you said, Hap Controls or Suzo Hap now uh, should have them. Wells Garner still sells them. I think they so. don't do it direct though. You'll have to go through a, a reseller, right? I think you can get it directly from them. Directly from Wells? I think you can. So if you contact Wells, they may be able to sell you one? Maybe. Well, considering there's still a lot of light gun games in that size that are still using them, I think they would still be prevalent for that. So. I see a lot of 27-inch Right, it seems 25. like 27s have become So if you can squeeze an extra inch or two in there, sometimes that will help you. Um, they're more available. Outside, but I would certainly go to Hap or Betson. Outside of that, we have found some other ones not to be very good quality. Yes, like we that's said, true. we will call them out because we have got burned by some yeah. that. So be careful. Sometimes you if they're get Chinese, what you be pay careful. For. Exactly. <laughs> if they're if, 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 if you, everything's in Chinese on them, be careful. That's all. I'm yeah, saying. that's all we're saying. Because <laughs> uh, we had, I, but but Hap, I know, still sells some, and so does Betson. And uh, you so think Wells? They're still, and I think Wells. And if you can't get them straight from Wells and ask them what a distributor that you can go to is local to you. There and probably are several. I was about to say, the nice thing about Betson and HAP is they both have technical support centers you can call too if you have problems. Oh yeah, and they're so. real good. I, I, In fact, I lean towards HAP a lot just because I've used them for, for so, years. Much, so, yeah. many, so much stuff. And I, I've always found their troubleshooting, even monitors I didn't buy from them, they've helped me before. Suzo HAP. Yep, because I, they sell a lot of cap kits and stuff like that too. There you go. So, Rejectomaniac, hopefully answered your question. You can also follow the links there. Louie put a couple in there that you guys can go to. Hapmart and uh, arcademonitor.com, I believe, Tim. Okay. So, those are available there. So, Okay, Tim, we had a discussion question on our Facebook page recently. And the discussion question was, what are some of the phrases you've been told by someone trying to sell an arcade game? And, Tim, I put some there. It's an easy fix. It's just a fuse. It worked when it was new. That's right. something that we've heard at the auction quite a bit. And so we're going to share some of these with you guys. And if you want to share some in the chat, we would love that as well. So um, Tim, uh, our Facebook moderator here and uh, and live chat moderator tonight, Louie, said uh, the number one comment is just the fuse, right? Right. And then we have Charles. He says, it needs a new bulb for the screen. It needs a new bulb, Tim, for the screen. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so there you go. Um, <clears throat> what else do we have here? Um, Diego, someone crossed the wires. It's an easy fix. I have a feeling whoever said that was the one who did it. <laughs> what do you think? I Across the it. wires, that's the way it goes. Um, Chris says, um, it's probably just a CPU blown or some easy fix, right? Just, right. just a blown CPU, just a blown processor. It's not like it's any big deal. Um, Daniel says, works great, except it's got a squish screen. Well, I, I, I don't know if I would say that works great. I would not call that working great. There you go. And then Christopher kind of shared like two little back and forth commentaries here that he had. He says, okay, seller, yes, come tonight after work to pick it up. I will be here. Christopher says, I'm here. And Sarge says, oh, sorry, I sold to someone else earlier. Wish you had called before you came. You know, uh, sometimes, Tim, sellers get a little uh, trigger happy, and they'll tell somebody else to come get it, uh, especially if that somebody else offers them more money. Right. So you have to be careful about that. Christopher had another one that said, um, <clears throat> seller says, come this weekend and pick it up. Me, I'm here. I drive five hours. Where are you? So I said, oh, I'm not home right now. I'll come back next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. so yeah. much for those five hours, right? Not going to get those back. definitely right? been in that boat before. There you go. So here we go. Now, King Graham, we were talking about earlier, right. Tim. He says, it was working last week, but it has a blown power supply, ROM card's dead, wrong CPU board installed, and the monitor was dead. That reminds me. But it was working last week until I robbed all those parts from it, right? Right. Reminds me of the Arctic Thunder I bought one time. That's right. Wouldn't come on playing blind or something. Open it up and no PC in it, no monitor chassis, no power supply. Pretty much an empty cabinet. Right. Uh, Matt says, quit working one day and it's missing the board and the power supply. Just quit working. Just quit working. Um, It needs a new power supply. Missing the actual game board. That's our friend Josh, Tim. All right. Uh, And then uh, Howard says, works perfect. Pick it up and the screen collapsed. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to give Howard's a... Uh, I'm going to give the seller a break on that one. 
Okay. Because we all know when you move games, stuff like that happens. It does happen. And so that game could have been working perfectly at the dude's house, okay? But then just enough jostling and all of a sudden... Screen collapse, right? right? Okay. Hey, just refresh the solder. You'll be in good shape, right? Right. There you go. So, but uh, I'm gonna, Howard. I'm gonna give your guy a pass. I mean, I still think it's funny, but um, you know, collapse screen can happen. Cold solder joints happen, right? So there exactly. we go. Daniel says, extremely rare vintage Miss Pagnet. <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, you, you gotta watch out for those rare Miss Pac Man. They're getting I mean, more rare. Yeah, now. They, oh, absolutely. Rare one of a kind. Only one in existing. He's asking twenty five hundred dollars Galaga. Okay. Now, you know, if it's got white sides? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Depends on the Galaga. I wouldn't say one of a kind, though. Right. You know, it's like saying something's unique and there being two of them. Right. You know, that's not unique. Unique is one. Anyway, that's a big uh, semantic thing on my part. And then, Tim, you may remember that we were told that this guy had this game in the 1940s talking about a dig dug. And uh, mm -hmm. for those of you guys who haven't heard that story, we talked about it a lot on the Q&A podcast. But um, there was a guy that me and Tim went out to. He had a Sky Shark and yes. a dig dug. And he, and he called it Digger Dog. He called it Digger Dog. That's right. And he was like, I had a Digger Dog in the 1940s. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I remember pointing to the screen and going, it says right here, 1981. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't okay. believe me, boy? <laughs> yeah. And, so. you know, and I think you offered him 300 for the Dig Dog. Maybe Something so. like that. Because I mean, it, it, it was working. It was working. Yeah. You know, it, it was dirty. Right. It was dirty. Filthy. But it was working. In a filthy place. Yeah. And it was a filthy, nasty place. It was working. And you offered him three, three hundred, three fifty, something, something like, that. like that. And you're like, boy, for three fifty, I want to lay the door. Yep. Tell me it wouldn't even turn it on. That's right. That I wouldn't even turn it on for that price. <laughs> so you know, that's how things go around here, though, right, right Tim? So it's anyway, still sitting there. <laughs> so if you guys have some things that sellers have have told you when you're going to buy games. Share them with us in the chat room. We'd love to hear what what uh -huh. some of the things have. You know, uh, I love at the at the auction when they say it was working when it was new, or right. it's only money, can't take it with you, stuff like that. Uh, maybe you've heard some of those as well. So uh, just let us know, and we'll take it from there. Tim, I'm going to quickly cover this too. Um, SNES Classic Edition. I know a lot of you guys who follow our website are also trying to get one of these. The pre-orders actually went live. Tim, yes. it wasn't just a fake, a fake out. And I like how Mashable wrote the article, everyone is rightfully mad at Nintendo today. Uh, and what happened was, guys, um, the pre-order thing was just, uh, it was mass chaos, Tim. Yeah. Uh, Best Buy went live at like 1 a.m. Eastern and they sold out in 30 minutes. I mean, nobody was awake then to get one. I mean, well, right. apparently some people were, but you know <laughs> what I'm saying. And then Walmart went live 12 hours later and they sold out in seconds on wow. their website, literally seconds. Target was the same way. Went live minutes later, sold out in seconds. The only ones that didn't sell out too quickly were the GameStop and Think Geek bundles, which cost a fortune. So what what uh, GameStop and Think Geek do, Tim, is they bundle like the SNES Classic with like you know three items that cost major bucks and then sell it to you all for three hundred. Wow. You know, and so those are the only things that didn't. Guys, getting these things is hard. Mm -hmm. Okay, I figured that out, and I I understand that demand is high, but you think Nintendo would be smart enough to put out enough of these things that everybody would want, that everybody could get one. But apparently not. So, guys, if we find any more pre-order opportunities, we'll be updating them on our Facebook page. But it sounds like right now your best bet to get one is to stand in line on September 29th. And we're wow. not going to have another live show till then, so that's why I'm telling you right now, stand in line outside your local store September 29th. Okay. Okay, if you want one. So, there you go. Okay. Continuing on here, Tim. Okay, Tim, I guess we're at the end. Is there yeah. anything else you want to say? Anything else you want to talk about? No, just uh, thank everybody for, for liking. We're trying some new things. Well, thank you, Jonathan. I like the wide camera going over there, the interview. Maybe we'll do the after show on the wide cam. It was a, it was a lot of fun. There so, you go. Anyway, so, thank you guys. We had a, a big group in the chat room. Yeah, this is our biggest group ever. Thanks, everybody, in the chat room for and joining us. Now, Tim, we do a live. We do an after show. Are you up for an after show? Yes. Okay, we do an after show where we talk about no arcade stuff. It's usually a couple minutes after this. So if you guys want... Non arcade stuff in a couple of minutes. We'll talk about movies. I think what else are we talking about? There was a big fight that happened too, yeah, right? Some, uh, some kind of um, boxing match. I May Gregor, remember. you know, um, McWeber, something yeah. like that. <laughs> anyway, no, there's a big fight that happened. We'll be talking about that. And football season tonight, Tim, maybe right. talking about that as well. But guys, before we sign off here, just another reminder, real quick, uh, for those who are just joining us, that um, of course we had, we talked about Hurricane Harvey earlier in the show, Tim. And you'll find in the description for the video right down below that there are some links for you to donate. We'll throw those back up here at this time. And please, we, please consider donating. And we should say that as we're saying this tonight, you guys know we're live. You may be watching this later. That is is on the eve of when Irma is going to strike. Looks like Florida. Exactly. It looks so, like that's coming up very soon. So if you're in the Florida area, yeah. Evacuate now if you're in the line of fire, but also 
start donating, you may want to think about donating to those causes as well, right? Exactly. Dad? Think about our friends. We've got a lot of uh, friends, relatives, and uh, listeners in the Florida area. So we want you guys to know our prayers and thoughts are with you and that we hope that you are safe and that it dwindles down to nothing quickly. And uh, even friends in South, Car- South and North Carolina and up the East Coast, uh, let, hope all of you guys are staying safe and that we will be thinking about you and praying for you and hoping, uh, hoping for the best. And at least we have a little advance notice on these things, but they're still devastating. And, um, you know, it, it's one thing, we, we know a lot of guys lost games, but a lot of people lost a lot more than games. They lost homes and uh, even some lives that were lost. But we also saw a lot of people uh, saving folks. And oh, yeah. Bringing out the best, the heroic things. Um, you know, and I, I'll, I'll, just, I'll stay on the soapbox just for a second. You know, don't let the live media tell you, um, you know, that everybody in Texas, we were all racist and we were all this. When What happened was when the, when the times got tough, it didn't matter what color you were, it didn't matter what church you went to or what affiliations you were with, everybody worked together. And that's what it's really about. We're helping each other. I saw a lot of good things come out. So regardless of all the negative press, you know, gaming brings us together for one. Absolutely. Uh, doesn't matter what, uh, what you come from or where you are. I think gaming is a great thing that has drawn a lot of us together. And we're also, a lot of us are Americans, but we also have a lot of people, um, that are all overseas and, uh, you know, they have tsunamis and different things. So we all fight some kind of battle and it really helps to have some friends that will pull you through it and that will encourage you. So thank you guys for that listen to us. And we hope that we have encouraged you to help you uh, find games and work on games. But also we just encourage you to keep on going no matter what life throws at you, that there are better days. And uh, anyway, just we'll end, we'll end it there. Thank you all for watching tonight. Well, I do have to throw the other stuff on, but that was beautiful, Matt. All right. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, um, again, guys, uh, we do have the donation links below if you guys want to donate. we I know all of those causes would appreciate it. But yeah, and our thoughts and prayers are with everybody who's going to be affected by Irma coming up as well because it's going to be a big deal too. So. Right. Okay, Tim, let's move on here and let's just give all the uh, contact information before we sign off. So <clears throat> guys, we have our general email address and that's at questions at arcaderepairchips.com. Questions at arcade repair tips.com if you put live show in the subject it will get mentioned on the live show tim imagine that so questions at arcade repair tips.com that comes to me and tim if you guys want to send questions to us of course you guys know about our youtube page you're on it right now and that's youtube.arcade repair tips.com and the comments from the previous live show will be covered on the next episode tim not a lot of comments from the last one so we just kind of plowed through here but if you leave comments on this one we'll be sure to get them at the next live show and guys, we talked to Eric earlier in the podcast, right. Tim, and uh, early in the live show. And Eric and Chris host the Question and Answer podcast, and you can get to them at podcast at arcaderepairtips.com. Um, you can check their iTunes page out at itunes.arcaderepairtips.com or stitcher.arcaderepairtips.com for their Stitcher page. Guys, if you're not listening to the Question and Answer podcast, Eric and Chris are very good. Yes. Okay, and they have gotten a lot better even since the first episode. Every time, it just seems like there's more and more that I learned, Tim, from listening to them. For real. Uh, Guys, you know, we have never made that. We never said we were the know it alls of everything. The guru gods of gaming. They are. Right. (laughs) So, Eric and Chris. Yeah, they are. They are the guru gods of gaming. There you go. Really, their their knowledge base is so strong. There's almost, I I bet there's, it'd almost be harder to stump them with a question. They just have so much knowledge and they do a great job of explaining it's down to earth where you can understand it. So if you're not listening to those guys, you really are missing out. There you go. So, guys, you want to listen to that, itunes.arcaderepairtips.com, stitcher.arcaderepairtips.com, and you can contact them at podcast at arcaderepairtips.com. And, Tim, we have our social media pages. We have Facebook at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com. And Louie's in the chat. Louie, we want to thank you for all of the hard work you put into the Facebook page and to the live chat episodes. We enjoyed yeah. having you here tonight. And then all the stuff on our Facebook page also gets cross-posted on our Twitter feed, and that's at twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. Or you can just send a message to at arcaderepair. Tim, I think that's going to do it for this episode. We're, we're, we're not done. We're right. done with the episode. Li- uh, live show after show coming up here in a couple of minutes after me and Tim uh, drink some soda and go to the restroom. But um, mm-hmm. once that happens, we'll be back to talk about non-arcade stuff. But we want to thank everybody for joining us if this is where you're signing off here, Tim. And we, want to, we hope that you guys will be back next month. 
Right. Was that October? Our October live show? So first Thursday of the month. First Thursday of the month at 5.30, 5.30 Central, Time. Central Time. So we will be here so you guys can always join us for that. Tim, any last th- arcade thoughts before we uh, move into the after, sh- after show? No, let's go play some games. Sounds mm-hmm. good. So guys, thank you for joining us tonight for Episode 7 of the Life Show. And remember, here at Arcade Repair Tips, when you fix the game, you, you play, play the, the game. game. Take care, everybody, and good night. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production. Are we on? I think we're on. Hey, we're on. Okay. So there we go. I had to move the chairs, so we may be off center. Are after off show. Center? It looks like we still got some people around. Yeah, there's <laughs> still some people around staying for the after show. So, after show. Yeah. How'd that, that show go? Like... How'd the live show go for you? You know, I really liked it. John, you do a great job. I, I mean, I like the way we switch slides. We show pictures. We show uh, different scenes. We had an interview. I don't know what else... Uh, how you can top it, but it's they seem like they're getting better and they're more fun to do. <laughs> I definitely can't stand to listen or watch myself, but I, I would think I would hope we're that's watching ourselves a, right there. I would hope that's a I'm not watching it. Oh, you're not watching <laughs> I'm it. I'm not okay. looking that way. You're looking at but, the camera. Um, you know, I would hope that it, it is entertaining to an extent, but also helpful. And I, I really appreciate all the people in the chat room. I tell you what, the chat room was awesome it, tonight, weren't they? And they were kind of chatting over there and and talking. And Louie, you're were a lot of help tonight, so I really appreciate that. Uh, it really made it fun. So, yeah, I liked it. Okay. I've got a live show outline. Okay. I, I make outlines for everything. I yeah. Know. Okay, here we go. So, um, Mayweather versus McGregor, thoughts and impressions. So, Tim, the, uh, the I guess we did some reshoots, right, that morning. Yes. Uh, so, when Mayweather and McGregor happened, we did we did some reshoots for the cocktail. And, you know, I remember you saying, hey, you guys, can we come over tonight? I was like, sure. And so, uh, we had a big crowd at my house for the yeah. big fight. Um, probably, oh, golly, um, 17 people. Something Maybe, like that. Something like that. Uh, that we had over here watching the fight. Now, Tim, obviously the fight didn't take place until about 11 o'clock, 11.30. Right. I, I forgot about all the pre pre. Yeah, I mean, there's the rest of the cards. And so but, it was oh kind of good that, you know, we had the game room open so people could come over here and play. Yeah, and so, so you know, uh, a lot of people came over and played. There were a lot of kids. There were only about, what, five of us that were actually watching the fights most of the time. Yeah. Um, the rest of everybody was in here playing. And then right when the McGregor 
Mayweather fight came on, everybody man, everybody was, was in there watching it. So, I mean, that's kind of how it went. <clears throat> but what'd you think? I mean, how long had it been since you've seen a, a boxing match? You said... Uh, oh, my gosh. I think the last one I watched was Holyfield Tyson. Now you, <laughs> that's been a long time. Yeah, when he bit his ear off. Right. I did see... Um, I saw Pacquiao Cotto. Yeah. And I saw Pacquiao Mayweather. I didn't see that one. Yeah, so, I mean, I've seen I've seen a couple since then. Yeah. Um, now, I'm an MMA fan, okay? Right. I mean, so, for me, I was pulling for McGregor all the way. I understand there's a lot of boxing fans out there that wanted Mayweather really bad. Um, I thought McGregor did well. I thought he held his own. But, Tim, I knew that in a boxing environment, there was no way he was going to beat Mayweather. Well, it was obvious that the stamina difference. Oh, yeah. You know, because it's one thing to, I mean, what a, I don't know, what a, what is an average MMA fight? Uh, you know, you go um, three five-minute rounds. Three five-minute rounds. Right. Yeah. So Whereas you're here talking, you're going like 15 three-minute rounds. Right. Or 10 three-minute rounds. Right. Or however many. Yeah. It's a lot of rounds. difference. And you're still, but MMA, um, I would say, you know, so different. But I thought he did a pretty good job. But then again, but then at the end, you're like, we're, now we're just going into strict opinions here. Was there a little bit too friendly afterwards? Right. It's almost like, thank you. It's all you, about Bill. It's thank all about you Bill. For, thank you for paying me so much. I, I don't, you know, this, I'm going to be honest. I mean, for that amount of money, you and I would have gotten in the ring with him. That would have yeah, been Yeah, that's true. But we can't build like they can. Right. I mean, that's what it comes down I'll to. I just never will forget when Leon Spinks was fighting Mike Tyson and it lasted six seconds. He walked in the ring, stuck out his chin, and went pink and said, thank you. Well, well, here's I got the, paid. So, so here's the thing about this, though. We paid 100 bucks for it. I got right. the bill today. I know we paid 100 bucks right. for it, okay? I felt like it was worth it. Well, oh yeah, it was. It was definitely was was a good fight. It was worth watching. Right. And and kind of. I mean, I think Mayweather was going to beat him. I yeah, mean, Mayweather was going to beat oh, him. Oh, I wouldn't. Ne- right. I wouldn't have put fifty cents on McGregor. But, but the what if was really the question. I mean, what if yeah, McGregor? Well, it takes just one punch, yeah, right? One punch, or, right. Exactly. And he did actually. He, you could tell he would come out really hard at the first of the round, and then he would just slowly. You know, his arms were getting tired and oh, tired. Yeah. It also made me appreciate what both of them do for a living. Absolutely. I just, you know, watching those guys, I'm just like, man, you really But, you know, it's the same thing. If you reverse roles and all that took place in an octagon, it was MMA rules, I imagine McGregor would tear him up. I'd love to watch that. I'd love to watch it too, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, I don't think so. uh, Overall, though, I thought the fight was good. Um, You know, I think McGregor's whole plan was like, I'm going to try to knock him out in the first... In the first couple rounds, and right. if I don't get him, I'm going to lose. I mean, right. I think he even felt like that. And then I'm going <laughs> to see how long I can go. Right, exactly. Because I think making it to the tenth round, that was where everybody, it, a lot of people had respect. They're right. like, "Wow, he made it this far." You know, right. it was like when they stopped it. And, and you know, we'll get into that I, just for a second before we go into something else. I do agree with the stopping Absolutely. of the fight at that time. Yeah. I, I think he was. He done. had not landed any punches in a, in a, a while. A lot of people said they stopped it too early. They should. Well, have here's the thing, though. In I'm MMA, like, no, he, he was, did stop it too early. Exactly. I mean, you know, in MMA, he didn't tap out. Right, exactly. In MMA, you gotta get knocked out. You know, standing TKOs like that, where a guy's still on his feet, very rare. I've seen maybe three of them in the time I've been watching right. MMA. It just doesn't happen that often. In boxing, it happens a lot, though. Yeah. And when a guy hasn't put up any offense for like two th- two minutes right. I mean what can you do and I mean you're, you're getting your you're getting beat you right. know what I'm saying it's like you're it's getting beat it's obvious at that point you're not going to come back and win right so exactly. why prolong the damage that could be done to somebody exactly and you know with boxing you have things like 10 counts where guys can get back up which I personally think is more dangerous than just getting knocked out mm-hmm. like when a guy gets back up after he already has a concussion and he starts fighting again mm-hmm. you know in MMA you got a concussion more than likely you're gonna, you're knocked out and you're on right. the mat and it's done so um, but you have to be careful with those you know and I think that's why the precaution was taken to go ahead and do the TKO at that time he hadn't really ended any offense so, I mean, I think it was fair. Um, Tim, Eric says, caught the last 45 minutes of the show. Good job, guys. Eric, wow. thanks for joining hey, us. We're Eric. glad you could get the show. Hopefully you saw your interview earlier in the show. If you just rewind it a bit. It's back there somewhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find it. Right now you're watching the after show, though. So, But thanks for joining us for that. Um, let's, now, Tim, you told me about this story. I had not heard it. Blind football player snaps for extra point in USC win. And Tim, this was actually covered by the New York Times, so that's how you know it's a big deal. It was just... So tell me about this. I, I had not heard this. I had not kept up with it. Well, so. here's what was neat about it. I just was so excited to watch college football. I, I'm really a big college football fan. And I actually have several... I'm a big Texas fan. That didn't turn out too well for me this week. But anyway, we'll continue. Well, you know my, you know my team, my yeah, main yeah, team. But right. I like a couple of teams. Right. I, I like I like LSU. I'll root for Texas. Please don't tell me you like USC. I, I do not like okay. USC. 
But, but I mean, that's still cool. I, but, I, you know, but not being they USC were fans. actually, well, they were playing, I think it was Central Michigan or somebody, and they actually made a game of it, so it was kind of close. And then I noticed they were making a really big deal out of this extra point, and uh, even the referee was down there, looked like he was talking to this guy, and I just thought, this is strange. And then they went into details this, uh, they have a blind football player, and they put him in and let him snap the ball on the extra point. And, um, you know, it was just it was just kind of like one of those things that was a little bit bigger than football at that time. Sure. You know, it was like he did a – I mean, he snapped it perfect, right? To, and, of course, you think – I mean, he's going on the snap count. He did it he, he, he did it just right. But when he got through, all the players were slapping him in the head and, you know, giving him a high five. And it was just an extra point. But it come to show that, you know – there's a dream that somebody had that was fulfilled. Now he right. may never play in the NFL, but it was it was just a. He good, got to snap a ball in the college game. It was a good moment, you right. know. We see these sometimes where where somebody will have a special needs kid and they'll put them in when they're behind by sixty points and they'll run for a touchdown or something. Sure. You know, it's there are things like that that just catch my attention sometimes. And sometimes I think that we can get so competitive and so everything that we just forget that you know it's really. Um, it, you know, there's more. There are more important things in life. Kind of like this weekend when, uh, or when the Cowboys in in Houston didn't play their preseason game. game, right? But they instead did a telethon, kind of in right. essence, to raise money. And uh, I saw where the people they were like, if you uh, paid to go to the game, we'd ask that you donate that money, sure. and we'll give it. Or if you want a refund, you get it. But if you'll come. You can actually be a part and meet all the Dallas Cowboy players. Right. So it's like, oh wow! So people that actually got to got to go to the game, they didn't get to see a game, and they got to meet the players. I just, I just, there's certain things like that that caught my attention. So if you haven't seen that, you want to put that link back up there, yeah, Jonathan, sure or you can just Google it: blind football player snaps extra point. Watch the video of that. There's a video of it, and it's just. Just, just really caught my attention. One of those things that I wanted to bring up. Can we go ahead and speech to the white cam? I just yeah, want to. Let's go. Okay, here we go. We're carrying our chairs. Right. <laughs> Might as well. We only got to use it for one segment. Segment. So I'm gonna, we're gonna move it over here. Okay, we can't see the chat over here though. Okay. All right. Are we in position? Okay, moving the mic. Okay, there we go. Are we good? I'd be interested in seeing what other people thought of this because it's so neat. So you see your game room really good and oh yeah, the white the white shot here. The okay, magic here we go. That people the magic about. happens. Yeah, so well, there's magic that happens. There is. Yeah, there's no magic. We fix games right here in this spot. <laughs> we do fit yeah. right here in this spot. And it gets so right cluttered and we have to clean it up. <laughs> That's right, exactly. So we do fix games right here. So, I mean, everybody should recognize what's around here. I mean, if they've seen the videos, right? I mean, yeah. all this stuff's around here. But so anyway. what is what? What are we? What are TV we shows and movies. Okay. Okay. TV so shows. I saw the Hitman's Bodyguard oh. with uh, Ryan Reynolds, okay. Samuel Jackson. Okay. And it was funny. Um, it you know, <laughs> the funny thing is that it was kind of like Netflix produced it. Okay, so they put the money, and it was kind of like, okay, guys, um, Ryan Reynolds, you be Ryan Reynolds, Samuel Jackson, you be Samuel Jackson. We'll throw a plot around you, but just do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so because of that, it's funny. Okay. So Samuel Jackson is a funny guy. Ryan Reynolds is a funny guy. And if you just want, I mean, if you just want something you're, it's kind of goofy and you want to laugh, it's a good movie. Okay. So I, I think it did terrible over Labor Day weekend though. I mean, it, it, it like had one. This is like one of the weakest weekends in like five years or I, something. I like believe that. that. Yeah. We went to the movies and it was like a the opening for for a movie and there was like ten people there. What did you like, see? Since we, we're talking movies. Well, um, I let my son talk me into taking me something I normally wouldn't have seen. Um, now it. I guess, no. Oh, okay. Well, it was a scary movie. Oh, there you go. So we saw, oh my gosh, Annabelle Creation. Oh, yes. I've seen the previews for Annabelle Creation. And it was actually, uh, if you're kind of like me, I I like, I don't mind being scared. In fact, I like thrillers. Thrillers, yeah, thrillers are probably are my I'm a favorite. Guy. Like yeah. a whodunit and stuff and it's kind of like that I'm not much for like a horror like jump screen right type stuff. slasher movies. slasher yeah see I don't like that's not my favorite right um but I liked it because it really was kind of a, a jump out and scary and not really gory and it was kind of and it talked about how Annabelle was created and stuff so it kind of was and if you know the story it's supposedly based on a true story so, Supposedly. Um, yeah, right, the doll is in a museum somewhere right. and they keep it locked up and all that stuff. So, 
my son really wanted to go, so we went and watched it with him, and it was actually pretty pretty good. It was kind of I was I was kind of scared. I was like <laughs> a couple times you're like, ooh, man, that was a little scary. But uh, anyway. That's what we went and saw, but I noticed at all the movies, I was like, it's in, the theater felt kind of emptier. Yep. I don't know why. Maybe high school football starting or yeah. something. Now, they have this new like movie pass thing that you can pay $10 a month, and you can get a uh, free ticket. You get a free ticket every day if you want to. Yeah, so like you can see unlimited movies for yes. $10 a month. If you guys haven't one heard of that. Once a day. Is it AMC one, that's doing it? It's not AMC. It's a separate company. I think it's started by a Netflix. I can't, don't quote me. I think it was Netflix. Guy, yeah, like investor. Yeah. I don't know if it's that or somebody else. It but. made me think, wow, the movie theaters, because that's what really what we do. We watch most of our movies at home. We'll oh, yeah. either rent, rent them through Amazon or watch Netflix. Sure. Uh, or Hulu or something that's, you know, we already paid for. Right. Um. So I thought about that. I was like, man, are they, it's really coming down to that. Well, you pay the same price and you can actually go to a theater. Right. And of course, you're going to pay for popcorn and all that kind of stuff. About 10 bucks a month. There. I mean, but you got a one movie a month that that's basically pays for itself. Crazy yeah. good price. So I might, maybe bring some people back to the theater. Yeah, I'm going to go over here and check the chat real quick. Is anybody here? I think we're all alone, Tim. Somebody I'm just, just watching. That's all right. Okay. They, they didn't like this view. Here, scoot up a little bit. I don't, I don't know if we got the mic in here. Yeah, they didn't like this view. Huh? Yeah, they're not big on the wide, the okay. wide format. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so did you see anything else? Anything else? No, that's all that we've seen, just besides on Netflix and stuff. So, um, show-wise, TV show-wise, I've been watching A Halt and Catch Fire. If you guys haven't seen that, it's really good. It has, um, it's basically about um, a fictitious group of people who, um, in the 80s and 90s, start all these different computer businesses. And so, like, this is the final season of it. It's on AMC. So, okay. it's like, uh, you know, Walking Dead and mm -hmm. Mad Men, all those other ones. But, um, not, not Mad Men, right? Mad Men, I can't remember. But, um, you know... Basically, it's about computing in the 80s and the 90s and how these people kind of advanced with the technology. It's really interesting. There's a lot of cool shots of video games and stuff in it. So if you haven't seen it, it's really cool. Um, Halt and Catch Fire, the final season. So um, it okay. has four seasons, I think. I think this is the fourth. So if you want to watch the rest of them, you can. I think they're on the AMC app. But um, it's a good show. And then, Tim, um, you know, recently I... Uh, I had forgotten this existed, and I decided, well, I'm going to start watching it again. And that is Tron Uprising. Right. Tron Uprising is a cartoon right. that came out a little after uh, Tron Legacy, okay. the movie. And it kind of continues the story, um, but it's about Tron kind of gets hurt, okay, in this, um, in this universe. And so he has to have somebody kind of take over as Tron. Mm -hmm. because, you know, they're still fighting Clue, like they are in uh, in uh, Legacy. Okay. And so he there's this other program named Beck that Tron kind of takes under his wing, and so the whole thing is about that. But, Tim, it's they get the cameos from the actors. So the guy, um, the guy who played Tron in the original movies is the voice of Tron in the show. Oh, okay. And so, I mean, and, um, uh, you know, like, and there's several other people from the movie that also reprise their roles in, in Uprising. And so it didn't go for very long. I think it's only like one or two seasons. And I'm, I'm about halfway through. But if you like Tron, it's you should watch it. Okay. So if you like Tron, it's worth a watch. It's very fun. And, uh, you know, just for TV. I mean, you know, it's something to watch. But um, it came on Disney XD. Okay. A lot of people don't have Disney XD, which is a cartoon network. Mm -hmm. But speaking of Disney XD, we also watched the reboot of DuckTales right. with my daughter. Which um, we watched the, fir the first little episode. It was okay. Mm -hmm. You know, but they ran it for like 24 hours there where you could watch it like all the time. I but. noticed in the chat room, Louie had posted that, to mention, it, did you see where Netflix lost all the Star Wars? Well, yeah, whenever the contract runs out, Disney wants to yeah. start their own streaming service, right? Which is kind of cool because Rogue One is now on Netflix. Netflix. You can watch it. Right. But Oh, you mean uh, Star Wars Everybody Dies? Yes. That's what I call it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Everybody dies. So there you go. But uh, yeah, Star Wars, everybody dies. Yeah, okay. that one's on uh, Netflix. And then, have you seen it? Yes. Oh, okay. I was about to say, it's good. I want to move theater to see that. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I, I don't think I've watched it again. I don't want to see everybody die again. Yeah. I just, you know. It's kind of like once you've seen it, it's like. Yeah. Episode 7, I've watched a couple of times. Okay. You know, and I like, I like Episode 7 a lot. I need to watch it again. We're getting close to Episode 8 coming out, you know. Right. So, but um, yeah, Rogue One was good, but it wasn't. It, it was okay. It was a good. I mean, it was good to have a change of pace. I think. Right. But it is Star Wars. Everybody dies. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, I think Disney is the only company who can get away with it to have yeah. like all their. And to be honest with you, I would only subscribe though if they did either custom like if they did like exclusive Marvel shows 
that I couldn't see anywhere else on that little streaming service, or if they just threw the entire Disney catalog on one, I think that they'd have a lot of subscribers. Yes. So it's like, okay, we're going to yeah, do animated movies, we're going to do Star Star Wars, we're going to do Marvel, we're going to do um, all that on one streaming service. If they did that, oh, they would own. Right. You know, if depending on price. If they wouldn't just vault everything and just go ahead and... You, any Disney movie you ever want to watch, here you go. Right, you can exactly. watch it. And you can still release and the, then, You can still release the vault stuff, though, for people who want to collect. Exactly. You but know? I'm talking about on your live stream for right. your pay price that would be a great deal and people probably would jump all over it absolutely i would yeah so i mean i so i think it's a smart move by disney man they own the content yeah. i mean who owns more content than disney warner brothers maybe right. you know i mean who else has that much content in their catalog besides disney at this point so i mean to me warner brothers would be probably another one that could start their own streaming service netflix so i like netflix now because it is what it is and i hate that like all of these branches of service are coming off so you know like hulu mm -hmm. and cbs all access and and now disney's doing their own and soon you're gonna have to be subscribed to like 10 of these things to watch all the shows that you want to right. watch and you'll be paying what you were with, with your cable, cable exactly so it is what it is but 10 football game tonight first official nfl game of the season yep so. great good be a good game tonight and uh, of course we're cowboys fans and we're looking forward to them playing the giants and uh, on sunday night yep right. sunday so. night Okay. Is there anything else? Let me check the chat. Nah. Coming over. Okay. Nobody said anything, but there's still people watching. Let's see. Oh, Paul. Paul says hi, guys. Well, hey, Paul. <laughs> okay. Okay. Come back over. Okay. There's, there's no award for sticking <laughs> yeah. around this long. No. Right? <laughs> there's no award. But I may get about? I may get an award if I don't get home pretty soon. Get I, I okay. Well, a grocery well, list. well, here before before you go, what TV shows? You didn't tell me any of your TV shows. I you have watching? been. We've been watching Wentworth. Wentworth. It, what is Wentworth? Wentworth is a um, a prison show, kind of like if a lot of people like Orange is the New Black. It's a little, it's a more realistic prison show. It's based in Australia, and um, it's really about a woman who, basically, her husband kind of beat her, and uh, she really uh, almost killed him. She literally did. She she was going to kind of snapped, and so she goes to prison for attempted murder. And, uh, but she really doesn't belong there. She's totally out of place. She's a nice lady. She's a nice person. Uh, but, you know, some of the things that go on there, it's actually a lot of drama. More, what, uh, network? It's, uh, it's on Netflix. Netflix. And so we've been watching it on Netflix. And uh, it's a little different than our normal show. So we kind of mix that in and now watch The Good Place. Have you seen The Good Place? You know, I, know, I saw that they've got a new season coming up. I have not oh seen it. Oh my gosh. Is it good? I, like, I have not. Just Who's said, in it? Is it uh, Ted Danson? Ted Danson, is in it, I was And I can't it. think of the girl's name, but it's so funny. And, and, and you guys know, if you know me, you know, it, it, I don't, it's not like a, uh, it, it's just funny. It's a, it's a real simple theme. A girl basically dies and goes to a place like heaven. She calls the good place, and then they have a place called the bad place. <laughs> and she, easy enough. It's easy enough, right? right? They're, basically, they <laughs> sometimes say heaven and hell in there. Right. And what happens is about two. Or, they're like, "This is your perfect mansion. Look, we decorated it with clowns." And she's like, "Yay!" And she's looking around. She realizes they made a mistake. Right. She was not supposed to go to the good place. And her, her, uh, she meets her soulmate. And all these people, and they all have done these great things all over their lives, saved all these children's lives. They were heart surgeons and, you know, and all these good people. And she realizes she kind of was a little bit on the crappy side. And she shouldn't <laughs> have got there. But when she realizes they have a robot and that kind of will appear and tell you stuff. And she's like, what is the bad place like? And she goes, here, I'll let you listen in. And all you hear the people screaming and hollering. <laughs> and she's like... Oh, well, I love, I sure do like clowns. Clowns are nice, you know. And it's so funny because she realizes I'm in the wrong place, but I don't want to go there, so I better act like a good person. Right. And finally, in the end, you know, she's like, I'm a horrible person because I'm lying. And so you have to watch it. And Ted Danson does a great job. Basically, he is not God. He's kind of like working for God. He is his first time he gets to design a place mm. for these people. He's gotcha. the architect. Okay. And so he wants to get everything done right and stuff starts going bad because she's there. There's a presence there that's not perfect. Right. And so he thinks, oh, I'm messing up. I don't know what's wrong. It's very, very funny. I have not sit there and just laughed out loud. I mean, my wife like, what are you watching? I will give that a watch tonight. Netflix? You, no, it's on Netflix called The Good Place. I know that the, the new and season's coming up. Pretty soon. And it's very clean, kind of funny. Uh, it's hard to find that. In fact, 
Yeah, in fact, because she you can't she's in the good place, so she can't say every time she goes to say something, she'll go, Oh, Sherbert. Right. And she'll like, Why did I just say Sherbert? And she's like, Oh, that's right, I'm in the good place. So she can't even say a bad word if she wants to. And right. so it's funny how that things change for her. She goes, You know, it really sounds funny every time I want to say Sherbert or something, you know. There you go. Whatever. Well, I'll, I'm going to give it a watch tonight. In I watched minutes. all 12 episodes in about four days. Wow. Well, it's about to come back on. So you it's only 20 more. minutes show. Okay, 20, so 20, it's, it's, it's a really short. One. Right. But they're funny and they're, they're really CBS? good. I think it's CBS. Yeah, I think it's C. I want to say. Or NBC. It's it's a it's a make. It's not ABC. No, it's not ABC. I think it is CBS. CBS. NBC. Maybe, but um. Anyway, it's on Netflix now, so you can watch them all. So now, one more question. I know we're going long. Funny. This is us. Do you watch that? Because there, a lot of people love that show. I have not seen that. I have not seen it either. I want to see that though. I ha- same thing. I don't want to kinda... cry. Apparently, people cry a lot watching that. Yeah, exactly. That's what somebody said. Don't watch it if you don't want to cry. So it's like very touching. So I kind of like, stayed away from it for that me reason. Me too. <laughs> so that's what I said though. We kind of mix it up with a funny show and this serious drama over here. So we're trying to mix it up a little bit. But well, I'm always looking for a clean comedy. So I'll check out the good place. But now that it's football season. That's yeah. right. Exactly. And you know, it's still baseball season, Tim. I'm I watch sure. baseball most nights. Rangers are not playing tonight, though. It's an off night. Thursday nights. That's why we do our show on Thursday nights right. sometimes. But anyway. Okay. Well, we got. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you just are tuning in now, you <laughs> tuned into the end of the show. <laughs> that is it. Um, we need to go. But uh, Tim's heading out. In fact, you, you can leave. And uh, um, uh, we're, we're going to see you guys, I guess, uh, next month. So uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Tim, I'm going to take the chair. <laughs> no, that's it. Okay. We're done. So uh, we'll just leave the chairs there, and we'll come back later. Okay. Bye, guys. Oh my gosh, it's 7.30.